Hey, Marie. Hey, Liz. What's wrong? The leader got mad at me and it took so long. Well, I did make a mistake. Even though I apologised, he kept saying, you have to fix this and that, on and on. That man is a long story. Well, it's late, so you should have a glass of wine and go to bed. OK, I will. But actually, I have something important to tell you. It's very hard to say, but you're my colleague and dear friend, so I thought I had to tell you this as soon as possible. What are you talking about? You're being so formal. It's scaring me. It's about your husband. What happened to my husband? I think you should break up with him as soon as possible. Otherwise, you're going to be unhappy. Huh? What are you talking about, Liz? Why would you say that in the first place? I'm really sorry for saying this, but you're worried about something, aren't you? If you have anything on your mind, I'm here for you. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? Doesn't he come home late or in the next morning a lot lately? Well, sure. Lately he's been coming home late at night, sometimes in the morning. Right? Isn't he cheating on you? Wait a minute. Don't assume. I'm saying this because the sooner you leave him, the better for you. I don't like telling you this. I can think of a few that come to mind. Right? If your relationship with him is cooled off, you should get a divorce as soon as possible. Sure, we've been married for eight years, but we haven't had a decent conversation lately. When we first got married, we used to go out together. Marie, it's for your own good. Don't waste your time. Well, I'll talk to my husband. With your husband? Don't do that. Why? I have to talk to my husband. No, you can't. You'll just get in trouble. The divorce process seems to be harder than you think. I don't think getting into trouble like that is a good idea. Wait. Why are you so desperate? Well, that's because I'm worried about you. Just get a quick divorce before things get ugly. I'm saying this for you. I don't want to say this to my friend. Liz... Thank you. Come to think of it, he is all about himself. He doesn't help with anything around the house, but he complains about the way I cook and clean the house. Look, I knew it. You should just break up with a guy like that right away. You're still young, so you can start over. Well, maybe you are right. Hmm, I'll think about it for a bit. Hey, how have you been? You seem to be working overtime a lot lately, but are you busy? Yeah, it's tough when a young employee leaves suddenly, working overtime every day. More importantly, how are things with your husband? Have you discussed it with him? That's what you're worried about? Of course, my friend is in trouble and I'm willing to help you as much as you need. You are right. Maybe he's having an affair. He's been coming home in the mornings from time to time for a while now, but it's getting more and more frequent. And when he does finally come home, he won't even talk to me. So what do you do? Are you going to get divorced? I can't decide so quickly. I'm really busy. What? Why? I told you it would be better for you if you divorced your cheating husband as soon as possible. Hey, why are you mad at me? From this point on, it's a couple's problem, right? If I'm getting a divorce, I have a lot to think about. Whatever, just get a divorce. How long are you going to be with a guy who's cheating on you with another woman? I'm just suspecting the infidelity and I don't have any evidence yet. There's evidence. Huh? I'm the one having the affair with your husband. Come on. What are you talking about? Stop joking at a time like this. I'm tired. It's true. 
He came home in the morning again yesterday, didn't he? He was with me. I see. So that's what this is all about? You weren't worried. You were having fun. I've been wondering why you're so desperate, but it makes sense now. Ha! Don't pretend to be cool about it. That's a shame. You didn't care about your husband at all because of your work. That's why it's so easy for a nice girl like me to take him away. Can I ask you a question? Why did you tell me about the affair? I wouldn't have known if you hadn't told me. Because I want you to divorce him right away. Alex said he would marry me if you get divorced. I can't believe it. You have a husband and children, don't you? What are you going to do? I'm going to break up with my husband. I don't care about my husband. If only I could take Alex from you. You are a terrible person. Well, if that's the case, now that I have proof, I'm going to get a divorce. You said it. Make it quick. I won't forgive you if you ever change your mind. Our relationship is cold anyway, and I'm so tired of his sarcasm about all the housework. Should I thank you for your support? Thank you, Marie. Now Alex is mine. This is awesome. At this moment, I feel alive. This pleasure of taking away what others value. This sense of superiority. You're vulgar. Well, if I can leave a husband who cheats on me with his wife's co-worker, I'm happy to do it. But you'll have to pay me exactly what you owe me in alimony. Huh? What is alimony? I'll charge you and Alex. If you're not happy, get a lawyer so we can discuss this. And, of course, I'm going to tell your husband about this. Wait! Don't say a word to my husband! What are you talking about? How can you keep silent about such an important matter? Wait! There's a reason! Missed call. Are you listening? You don't have to tell him. Missed call. Missed call. Long time no see. You looked busy earlier. Can we talk a little? Are you doing well at work? Did you get promoted in your career? Liz, you're still the same. I can't imagine you being in front of the company you left. Well, I was so happy to see my former colleague and dear friend. Don't get me wrong. You're no longer a former colleague or friend. You're just my ex-husband's cheating partner. You married Alex and left the company right away, and it doesn't matter anymore, right? Don't be so cold. Actually, I have a lot to tell you. Alex and I are no longer together. Oh? Already? It's only been a few years since then, hasn't it? After all, predatory marriages don't work. Listen, Marie, it was really hard after that. You revealed my affair and my husband got so furious that I was kicked out of the house. I quit my job because people at work found out I was cheating on my husband and they all looked at me in a strange way. Of course, if you steal your co-worker's husband, there's bound to be a rumour at work. It's a natural outcome. Besides, when I told my husband that I couldn't pay alimony, he told me to leave all my belongings behind. He took custody from me and I can't see my kids. No wonder your husband got so angry. Think of what you did. I quit my job and my income was gone, but Alex didn't have as much money as I thought, and we were fighting every day. Still, I thought Alex would make a little more money, but he disappointed me. I couldn't stand being with a guy who doesn't have money, so I broke up. You really only think about yourself. So did Alex. So you two were a good couple. Oh, Marie, you're so sarcastic. Because of that whole thing, I'm now abandoned by my parents and out of touch. It's hard, because I can't rely on anyone. Liz 
How dare you complain to me like that? Did you expect me to feel sorry for you? What? You don't feel sorry for me? No man and no money? I don't think so at all. You got what you deserved. But it was so nice to see you today. Life is about bad things followed by good things. Are you glad to see me? What do you mean? I saw the ring on your left ring finger. What's wrong with that? Isn't that a wedding ring? There's no way that's your ex-husband's ring. Did you get remarried? Oh, didn't you know? Of course I didn't know. You didn't tell me. When did you get remarried? What's he like? I got married six months ago. He's a very kind person. Oh, I'm getting excited. I'm excited. I'll take it again. Marie's precious. Liz, what are you saying? Don't you get it, you fool? I'm saying I'm going to take away your new husband. When I got Alex from you, it felt so good. Give me another chance. You're my best friend. Wait a minute. Do you know who my husband is? I don't know. I'll take him from you, no matter what kind of man he is. There's never been a man who didn't fall for me. Right, then I won't say anything. Do what you want, if you can. Aha, is that a threat? I'm getting excited. I wonder if I get to see Marie's frustrated face this time. I'm sorry to interrupt your fun, but can you please pay my ex-husband's portion of the alimony as soon as possible? Huh? Such a thing. Wait till I get him from you and then he'll pay you handsomely. Right. You don't have any money. Well, call me if you take my husband away from me. I'm looking forward to it. I can't stop being excited. Only now can you show your attitude. I'll be in touch again. Marie, where are you now? Are you still at the office? Yes, but what do you want? Will you leave me alone because I'm busy? Are you working late? That's hard work. What time will you be home? I'm going to be late today. Can we do this tomorrow? Lucky. Do you know where I am? I don't know. I said I'm at work, right? Will you leave me alone? I'm visiting your house right now. Huh? You don't know where I live right now, do you? When I ran into you the other day, I secretly followed you. Nice house. Stop acting like a stalker. It's really annoying. And even if you know where I live, you can't go in. I've locked the door, so you can't get in, okay? I broke the window a little bit when I entered the house. I'll wait for your husband to come home. I'm sorry, Marie. I'm glad you're working overtime today. Wait, that's trespassing. It's a crime. The details don't matter. You know what? You're going to let me sleep with your husband again, okay? Are you sure you want to be working overtime at a time like this? My husband will never sleep with you. You'd better get out of the house right away. Why? I knew you were panicking. Don't worry. I'll talk to your husband. I'll leave you unreported if you leave now. Do you know what will happen to you if I sue you? You're going to jail. As long as I can take your husband, I don't care about that. No, I don't think so. What's more important? What's with your bossy attitude? He would never sleep with me? You don't know that. I don't know how honest he is, but there has never been a man in my life who hasn't fallen for me. I gave you advice, but you don't understand. That's okay. Stay there as much as you want. What? What are you talking about? My husband will be home soon, so don't hesitate to stay there. What's that? You've suddenly changed your attitude. If I run into him, your husband will fall in love instantly with my charm. I'd love to see my husband and you end up in that situation. Why are you so bullish? You got crazy from worrying too much. I won't hold back. I'll definitely take him away. 
You know, talking too much like that makes you look cheap. Shut up. Just admit you're upset. I won't forgive you, even if you apologise now. It's about time my husband arrives home. Tell me what happened, OK? I'm looking forward to it. <coughs> Missed call. Hey, what is this? Answer me. Marie! How did you like my husband? A good man, right? I wonder if he fell for you yet. You've got to be kidding me. My brother suddenly came in instead of your husband. It's not fair to call my family. Where is your husband? Tell me. I'm going to take him from you, I swear. My husband is right there. Huh? I'm telling you, that's not your husband who is here, but my brother. He's here because you called him, right? No, it's your brother's house too. What are you talking about? I don't know what you mean. Why is my brother at your house? No way! Exactly. We got married six months ago and we live in that house. Oh no, that's impossible! My brother has always been a tough guy and I've never seen his girlfriend. I can't believe my brother got married. And with you, Marie. Why? Let me reintroduce you to my husband, Michael. You looted it, didn't you? What are you talking about? You don't say I stole it from a sister. Where did you and my brother meet? Michael first came to apologise for your scandal, saying that my sister had done something terrible. So, in a way, I'm grateful to you. Oh, that's... He also gave me a lot of advice about you and your ex-husband not paying alimony. He knows a lot about the law, and he was really helpful. I was in a mental breakdown at that time because of someone, and he was very kind to me. And we became close eventually. Oh, Liz, your family abandoned you, so you didn't even know that your brother got married. Shut up. I thought I was done with marriage, but then he was so kind that I decided to remarry and start over my life. So, you really did make it possible for me to marry Michael. Thank you, Liz. I'm really happy now. What? 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 He's my brother. Why is he on your side? That's so not fair. Fair? Why are you talking like a child? Michael was very concerned about his sister's predatory marriage and took it seriously. This is what happens when you don't reflect on what you've done and do the same thing. Are you going to lecture me? No way. I wouldn't do that to a friend. Instead, I have a surprise guest for you. I just got a call and they're on their way, so they'll be there about the same time I am. What? Who is the surprise guest? Your parents. They're also my in-laws. Oh no, you're going to get me in trouble for sure. When I told them that you were coming, they said they would come right away. Good for you. They didn't give up on you. What are you thinking? This is going to be real bad. Can you stop now? I'm so sorry. Please forgive me, OK? Hey, Marie, you're my friend. It's too late. I hope you will reflect well on your actions and pay alimony. You will be paying for this trespass and damage to property. Oh no, it's impossible. Ah, oh, you seemed to be able to afford it earlier, didn't you? Take responsibility for what you did. Hey Marie, do something about it. My brother says this. The whole thing about trespassing and damage to the property is on the surveillance camera footage, so be prepared for a lawsuit. Well, your family, and I'm sure he'll just add it to the alimony. Oh no, how much do I have to pay? I don't have that kind of money. I tried to loot a new guy because I didn't have money, but it all ruined. 
If you don't have the money, you're a criminal convict. It's not such a serious crime, so the sentence will probably be short. But a hard life in prison would help that character a little, don't you think? I definitely don't want that. Forgive me, you are my friend, aren't you? I'll be home soon. Sorry to keep you waiting. My father-in-law and mother-in-law just arrived. Ha! Huh? I'll be right there, so let's talk about the rest of the story together. Later, when my in-laws and I entered the house, Liz was already crouched down with a pale face. Her parents and brother were angry with her and made her apologise for looking down on me. And Liz was remorseful and became quiet, like a different person. In addition to the previous affair, she is now being charged for trespassing and destruction of property, further increasing payments and forcing her to live a difficult life. She said she couldn't pay the alimony because she didn't have the money. So she took a live-in job at a factory owned by a friend of her father's and her parents are going to keep an eye on her until the alimony is paid. My in-laws apologized to me profusely and instead of inheriting a large amount of inheritance to Liz, they decided to inherit it to us as a couple with apologies. I've been through a lot, but now I'm really happy and grateful to Liz for giving me the opportunity to meet my husband and his family. Hi. Good job. Huh? Are you busy right now? What's wrong? It's unusual for you to contact me out of the blue. That's mean, you know. It's not a problem for me to contact you anytime, right? I'm your cute junior after all. Yeah, yeah. Did you cause another problem at work? No, I didn't. That's mean. Please don't talk as if I'm always making mistakes. This is the truth, isn't it? Just the other day you made another ordering mistake, didn't you? Huh? Do you know about all of my mistakes? That's scary. I'm the one who went to apologize to the client, you know. Of course I know about all of your mistakes. But I apologized, didn't I? It's good to apologize, but it would be even better if you made fewer mistakes. It's not good to be angry all the time, you know. Your wrinkles will increase and you'll end up looking like a grandma, you know. Don't joke around. So, did you have something to talk about? That's why you contacted me, right? Ah, oh, yes, yes, that's right. What, is it about work? No, it's something else. What? It's about you, actually. About me? What? Is there something bothering you? I heard a rumor, you know. There's something I want to confirm. A rumor? What is it? Please answer honestly and clearly, okay? No need to be dramatic. Just tell me already. I heard that you're divorced. Is it true? <laughs> huh? How many years have you been working at this company? Huh? Probably about a year. One year, huh? What's the matter? Aren't you avoiding answering my previous question? You're still a young employee, and how should I put it? You don't seem to care much. What do you mean by that? I mean you don't hold back. Ah, uh, I'm always told that. <laughs> I'm not necessarily complimenting you. Just so you know. Eek! No way! So, am I being scolded right now? You have a narrow mind. <laughs> you know, I don't like getting angry like this either. But when it comes to other people, when you ask personal questions, think a little more. Aw, oh, you're so nitpicky. Well, to begin with, that way of speaking is also undesirable. Oh, no. I even got called out for my way of speaking. 
Listen more carefully when someone points out something you need to improve on. Please wait. You haven't answered my previous question yet. Even if I say this, you're still going to ask about it. Please tell me quickly. It's just answering, right? It's not about that kind of problem. Don't you understand that it's an issue of your sensitivity? Fine. I just want to know if the rumor is true. It's called a rumor, but I haven't been hiding anything. Just for this time, change your attitude, okay? Yes, yes, got it. I'll answer because you're being persistent, but yes, I am divorced. I knew it. The rumor was true. Are you satisfied now? Well, I have no idea why you wanted to know something like this in the first place. It's pitiful, isn't it? What do you mean? I mean, being over 40 and divorced, still single, as a woman. It's a dead end, right? <laughs> huh? Did you already forget what I just said? Huh? What is that? Was there something you said to me? Well, I'm not even over 40 yet. Huh? Is that so? I'm sorry. Can't you do something about your habit of making disrespectful remarks to others? I don't mean it that way. It's just that you look around 45 years old. I just misunderstood. Cut it out already. I'm still 38 years old. What? Oh, I see. So, after knowing my background and age, what did you want to achieve? No way. I didn't mean anything. What's with you since earlier? Well, being around 40, you're already an old lady, right? What did you say? Uh, I'm sorry. That was definitely going too far. You? If someone is called an old lady, it would hurt, right? They say the truth hurts the most. That's not helping at all, you know? But at that age, it seems like there won't be any chance of meeting someone. You'll be single until you die, right? Don't make assumptions about others. Even at 38, there are plenty of opportunities to meet someone. Really? But you're more than 10 years older than me, right? It must be tough. There are plenty of people who get married at 40 or 50. Don't jump to conclusions. Well, I understand wanting to have hope, you know, but getting married at that age? <laughs> What's so funny? The partner would be an old man, wouldn't they? Or maybe even an old man? <laughs> Stop making fun of people. I'm saying this for your own good, you know. For my own good? Having false hope about getting married, isn't it painful when it doesn't work out? I just wanted to convey the importance of acceptance. It's none of your business. You have nothing to do with my life. I'm trying to give you advice, and yet, please don't say such things. Your way of speaking is inappropriate. Didn't you attend the etiquette workshop during the orientation? Come on, don't change the subject. Just because your age was laughed at. It must be frustrating, right? Frustrating? I've never even thought about it. Once again, pretending to be strong won't work, you know. When you reach the same age as me, you'll understand. What do you mean? You'll realize how irrelevant and off-topic your comments are right now. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Are you still interested in continuing this conversation? Huh? I'm enjoying it, you know. Frankly speaking, it's unpleasant. Let's have a more open mind. I just want to have a pleasant conversation with you. Cut it out already. Huh? I'm going to have you redo the new employee training. Haven't you forgotten that I'm your department supervisor? Based on your work attitude, I can have you start from scratch. That, that would be troublesome. I'll apologize properly. Reflect on it properly. I'm sorry. <sighs> but the reason I contacted you was because I had something I wanted to discuss. 
what now? Is there more? Well, actually, this is the main topic, or something like that. What? Is that something personal to you? Yes, that's right. Honestly, I'm not in the mood to listen to other people's stories right now. Please don't say that. There's something I really want you to hear. Oh, is that so? Can't you ask someone else? Of course not. It has to be you. I guess I have no choice. Go ahead and tell me. I mean, I'm young and cute, aren't I? Should I just end this conversation? Wait a moment. I understand you might feel jealous, but please listen to the end. Ah, yeah, sure. So what happened to you being so young and cute? Exactly. Well, actually, because I'm young and cute, I'm getting married. Yeah, yeah, congratulations. Wait a moment. Please give me more celebration. I did say congratulations. But there should be more. Reactions and stuff. What else am I supposed to say besides congratulations? Really? No way. I'll look great in a dress because I'm cute, right? What's your husband like? Stuff like that? What? No way. I bet you'll look good in a dress. I wonder what kind of person your husband is. Is this enough for you? Hey, you're jealous, aren't you? Your heart really isn't in it, is it? I think your marriage is a happy occasion. But as I said before, I'm not in the mood for a cheerful conversation right now. Aw! I thought you would be surprised and happy for me. It's a shame, but why don't you talk to other friends about it? Well, my friends don't really listen to me either. I can understand how your friends feel. How awful! What do you mean by that? Why don't you try some self-reflection? Oh, you're talking behind my back, aren't you? I get it, you know. Yes, yes, I understand now. Well, it's not exactly fun, is it? Hearing the marriage announcement of a younger and prettier woman than yourself? I just talked to you about being mindful of your language. Was it tough news for you? Who has experienced a failed marriage and is now facing a lonely life? But I'm going to be happy. I'm sorry, okay? Is that all you wanted to say? Yes, that's it. Well then, do your best. One year later. Hello? No response. You're not blocking my messages, are you? Please reply. Quickly. What is it? I thought it was a message from someone I hadn't heard from in a while, and it's you. Long time no see. Were you lonely without me? You actually left the company a few months ago. I had no idea. After transferring to a different department... We didn't have any opportunities to see each other at the office anymore. I felt so lonely, you know? Oh, really? Please don't give me a cold response. The person I married a year ago was a colleague from the same department, so I had to transfer. It's considerate to avoid having spouses in the same department. It can make work difficult. I didn't make you transfer, though. I know that, okay? Why did you quit your job? Was it because you didn't fit in the new department? Well, it's more like a vague feeling, you know? Vague feeling? That's a peculiar reason. I just didn't want to keep working like you, even as I got older. That's why I decided to quit my job for a while and do what I want. Ah, I see. Well, I could do that because I got married, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so, what's the point? I contacted you today to celebrate. Celebrate? What for? I heard that you are getting married. Is it true? Who did you hear it from? Well, it's more likely a rumor, you know. 
I'm still connected with acquaintances from the company. I see. So you came to verify the truth of the rumor. Yes, exactly. Is it true that you're getting married? Well, it's more like engaged. What? No way! I'm so surprised. Is that so? It's not something to be surprised about, really. I can't believe it. How did you manage to find a partner? Your way of speaking hasn't changed, I see. Well, I've already quit my job, so I'm no longer your subordinate or anything, right? Just appreciate that I'm speaking politely, okay? Politely? Then I guess I don't need to be considerate anymore. We're not colleagues or anything. That's right, huh? Let's be honest with each other. So, my engagement has something to do with you? Well, not necessarily. How did you manage to deceive someone? What are you talking about? I mean, you cleverly tricked someone and ended up getting married, right? I mean, there's no way a woman in her 40s can get married, right? Stop insulting people already. But I'm curious. I wonder what methods you used. Does the man know about your age? Of course he does. I don't see the point in hiding my age. Well then, you owe your ability to get married to me. What? I'm just stating the facts. It's thanks to me, right? Why would that be? You have nothing to do with it. But do you remember our conversation from a year ago? Of course I remember. It's not like I wanted to recall it, though. What? Why not? It was a fun chat. You didn't just mock my age. Mocking? Oh no, that's not true at all. You seemed out of touch with reality, so I just wanted to wake you up. It was disrespectful. I've heard enough about your boasting of being young and cute. Well, well, that's just the truth, so it can't be helped. Please stop being jealous. No, it's a serious prejudice to say that a woman around 40 cannot get married. Apologize to women all over the world. Exactly, that's the point. If someone like you, who supposedly can't get married, managed to get married, why is that? Well, that's because I had a destined encounter. That's not it. Huh? It's because of our conversation from a year ago. You got anxious about marriage. What are you talking about? I don't understand what you mean. You still don't get it. You have no self-awareness despite receiving help from someone. Stop saying incomprehensible things and insulting me. I never received any help from you. Back then, I informed you about my marriage. It means that I prompted your actions towards marriage. I'm just too kind. No, you have nothing to do with it at all. What are you saying? You should be more grateful to me. Grateful for what? Thanks to me, you are able to get married. Show some gratitude to Miss Lauren. I am truly amazed. First of all, I wasn't at all in any hurry or panicked about marriage. I was actually fine with being alone like this. Putting up a strong front like that won't work, you know. I understand it. What do you understand about it? It's okay not to be ashamed or rushed about getting married. I will give you my full blessings. Hmm, really? Isn't it obvious? So, who's the old man you're marrying? When I think about my engagement this time, you might not be completely unrelated. See, that's what I'm saying, right? Yes, in the end, it could be said that you contributed to it. Finally, you understand. I'm happy. Yes, I'm also happy to have such a lovely Cupid on my side. Well then, from now on, listen to what I say, okay? After all, it's thanks to me that you're getting married. About the person you asked me earlier, my fiancé? Ah, you mean the old man? Please tell me. How did you meet? 
actually. He's your ex-husband. Huh? You'll congratulate us, won't you? You said you would celebrate earlier, right? Wait. Wait a minute. What do you mean? You got divorced recently, didn't you? After being married a year ago? Did you think I didn't know? Huh? Huh? I don't understand. I am marrying your ex-husband. The official wedding date and ceremony will be determined later. Well, if I explain it so politely, will you understand? Th this is not that kind of conversation. But even though my ex-husband was indeed someone from the same department as you, we had different roles. Our work tasks were different, and we hardly had any interaction, right? Maybe that's true. Besides, it hasn't been that long since the divorce. I seriously don't understand what you're talking about. It's what he told me. Apparently, when you got married, you were leading a very extravagant lifestyle. That's none of your business. After quitting your job, I heard you were wandering around and buying whatever you liked. What's wrong with shopping once in a while? I heard you splurged on expensive brand cosmetics and bags using his credit card. The bill was quite substantial, it seems. So what? What's your point? Because of your reckless behavior, he got tired of it just a month after getting married. He thought you would settle down after getting married despite your wild tendencies before marriage. What is this all about? Are you two talking about me behind my back? Listen to the end. But you never took his feelings into consideration. You didn't care about the household matters and just said whatever you wanted and did whatever you pleased. You maintained that stance, didn't you? Don't act like you know everything when you know nothing. I've been through a divorce once, so I understand. A marriage doesn't work just by each person living their own way. Please keep quiet. I don't want to be lectured by an old lady like you. It seems he tried to make you understand by having multiple discussions, but you remained unchanged in the end. There's no way I could accept such discussions. Setting shopping once a week and determining the amount. He tried to propose something considering you, but you didn't change. I can't do what I can't do. I didn't want to give up on things I like. So because the discussion didn't reach an agreement, you brought up divorce from him just two months after the marriage. It seems like you didn't agree, and the conversation didn't progress. Exactly. Divorce based on such selfish arguments. However, ultimately, the court intervened, and the divorce was finalized. Yes, just last week. So you're saying that my ex-husband is already engaged to you? Just last week, the divorce proceedings were completed, and now? That's right. There's no problem at all. All the formal procedures have been followed. Stealing someone else's husband, how despicable. He's not your husband anymore. It's an engagement after the divorce. I haven't laid a hand on someone else's husband. Remarrying immediately after the divorce, unless there was already a relationship, it's impossible, right? Well, yeah. I guess you could say that. Half right, maybe. I knew it. You were involved with my husband. Unbelievable. You were such a terrible woman. Well, wait a minute. I didn't cheat or anything. What did you say? If there was no cheating, it's impossible to remarry so quickly, isn't it? I can't forgive you. Cheating with someone like this middle-aged woman? That's why I didn't cheat. He came to me for advice. How he can get you to mature. What are you talking about? Your wasteful habits and selfish behavior 
how to deal with them. Is this for real? Why someone like you? Maybe because I was originally in a position similar to your direct supervisor. I thought I knew how to handle you well. Then in our married life so far, the things he said to me? They were influenced by your opinions? Who knows? I gave various advice. But I don't know how much he actually adopted it. It's hard to say. You must have been whispering things to ruin our relationship as a married couple, right? That's obvious. That's not true. In the first place, he wanted to continue his relationship with you as a married couple. That's why he consulted me. I'm sure you gave him strange advice. You were jealous of me and tried to make me unhappy, right? Stop making excuses. When he said he wanted to have a discussion with you, he probably followed my advice. It's pointless to keep worrying about it. So it's better to have a proper conversation. This is... Honestly, your personality is too difficult for me to handle. I didn't know what the correct advice would be. He kept saying he wanted to talk? I wanted us to have a discussion and find a good solution for both of us. But it seems like you didn't even want to engage in a conversation. Well... You said you had no intention of talking if things didn't go your way and stayed out all night. He even suspected that you might be seeing another man. That's absurd. It's inevitable. If you keep staying out all night when your marital relationship is completely cooled off, it's only natural to be suspected. But wait a minute. How come you and my ex-husband can contact each other personally? Did you know each other's contact information? We didn't have any personal connection at work. You were the intermediary, weren't you? Have you forgotten? Huh? According to what he told me, you're the one who gave him my contact information, saying that I'm a reliable person. I... It's nice to be called reliable, but it's not good to share someone's contact information without permission. That time. Remember now? He contacted me through that and sought advice. This can't be true. He was genuinely worried about how to make you understand. That's why I couldn't ignore it either. As colleagues working in the same company, I listened to him with empathy. So does that mean you've been in contact with each other for quite a while? Yes. We've exchanged messages for a long period of time. But at some point you actually met in person, right? After discussing a few times, he expressed his desire to meet and talk face to face. That's... that's cheating, isn't it? Why didn't you refuse? Well, at that time, he was still married to you, so I had my doubts, too. Then? But, well, he's just a colleague, after all. Besides, he seemed to be under a lot of stress. So I agreed to listen to his complaints. That's all. Why would you do that? He's someone else's husband, you know. But we were also colleagues at work, you know. I was there for you as well, right? Even so. Well, after meeting once, we started having more direct conversations. As we continued discussing and confiding in each other, we began sharing personal stories too. Gradually, the distance between us narrowed. So, it's still just plain old cheating, isn't it? You sneaky thief! Don't misunderstand. I want to make it clear that there was nothing like that, okay? I didn't do anything to ruin your married life with your husband. There must have been a physical relationship, right? No. I divorced my ex-husband because of his infidelity. I haven't done anything that I hated being done to me. You're lying. You may not believe me, but 
There are plenty of chances to repair your marriage, right? Please think back on it. I don't know anything about any of that. It's his fault for cheating. This is the result of you ignoring every opportunity. Despite his efforts and my advice, it ended in divorce. What's going on? Are you mocking me like this? I gave him a chance, but you wasted it and took my husband away. No. But to begin with, there's something that bothers me about this divorce. Something that bothers you? When I received the news of the divorce, I was really disappointed. But there was a difference in your attitudes. Difference in attitudes? What do you mean? When the divorce was finalized, he looked really devastated. Well, that's understandable. He wanted to start over with you and even consulted me, searching for a way. Of course, I need him to look devastated. It's ridiculous for him to divorce me, a young and cute woman like myself. Exactly. Huh? Your reaction when the divorce was finalized. You had a very cheerful expression. A cheerful expression? Me? That's what I heard from him. You seemed confident in your youth and appearance. You believed that even if you got divorced, you could easily find another man. You didn't seem to regret breaking up with him. Your attitude like that has been hurting him all along. But it's the truth, isn't it? Besides, besides that. Even if I'm at fault for that, we were married, right? Don't you think it's incredibly unreasonable? That's a valid point. I won't deny that. Exactly right. What do you plan to do? Since it's a matter between colleagues at work, I was also concerned about that. That's why I've been talking to people around us about it for a while now. Huh? You've been talking about it for a while? What do you mean? Well, you can see, about our marriage this time, it was actually him who brought it up first. I actually declined at first. You declined? As you said, he's your ex-husband after all. Getting married right after a divorce, I couldn't help but hesitate. I was just offering advice. Then why did it turn into a marriage? Even after I declined once, he approached me multiple times, and I consulted with our colleagues about how to handle the situation. Approached? You? Multiple times? I thought I would face opposition, but surprisingly, there were many positive opinions. Wait a minute. He approached you multiple times, so it's confirmed that he was cheating, right? I didn't give him my consent, so it's not officially cheating. It was his one-sided feelings. That's just... Anyway, all of our colleagues whom I consulted with unanimously said the same thing. He would be happier with me than with you. That's... Are you saying that your reputation within the company is higher than mine? Everyone had the opinion that if the divorce was finalized, there would be no problem in getting married. It was also seen as a way to comfort him, who had been troubled by you all this time. Comfort him? And so, when the divorce was finalized... I accepted his approach. We officially got engaged. He will make me happy. Well then, goodbye. Thereafter. Afterwards, she stormed into the company, claiming that her husband was taken away by that woman. However, the employees who knew her usual personality actually doubted her accusations and rather suspected her. When I explained that I had only acted as a counselor, everyone supported me, and she became even more disliked by those around her. Despite considering herself a victim, she lost control and caused a scene, damaging several items in the office. Naturally, she was expelled from the company. I cut ties with her 
and now live happily with my husband. Hey, Auntie. Who are you? It's rude to message someone out of the blue and call them Auntie. Who are you anyway? Auntie, you must be around 35 years old, right? Yes, that's right. So what? More importantly, who are you? How do you even know my age? Auntie, you're 35 and don't have any children, right? That's none of your business. Come on, tell me who you are already. You seem like a pitiful auntie. What do you mean by pitiful? What's going on? Just tell me who you are. Come on, tell me your name already. I'm Carolina. Who? I don't know anyone named Carolina. I'm a medical student at K University. Oh, I see. You're in medical school. But I don't know you. Yeah, you wouldn't know me. Who are you? How do you know me? It's natural that you don't know me. Why did you contact me? Do you really want to know? Do you have something to tell me? Actually, there is something I want to tell you. Something you want to tell me. What is it? Your husband Kit and I are in a relationship. What do you mean? You're in a relationship with my husband? I don't understand what you're saying at all. I'm telling you that I'm in a relationship with your husband. Wait a minute. Are you saying that you're aware that Kit is my husband and you're still in a relationship with him? Yes, that's what I'm saying. And of course, I know everything about Kit. Do you understand what that means? And on top of that, you went out of your way to contact me about it. Yes, I did. And I know everything about him. That's how close he and I are. So you're aware that you're cheating with my husband, right? Cheating? It's not cheating. We love each other purely. Don't say it like that. Even if you don't want to say it like that, it's still a fact, isn't it? Kit is my husband. It's cheating, isn't it? I don't know if it's cheating, but it's definitely an affair. Using the word cheating makes it sound dirty. Whether it's pure love or cheating or an affair, it doesn't matter. But you and Kit have that kind of deep relationship, right? That's what it seems like. <laughs> Sorry, Auntie. Is that all you have to say? A light apology for knowing that you're cheating? It's because I look down on you, so I can't help it. You have no right to look down on me. Do you know how low what you're doing is? Low? Why? Do you understand your position? Having a deep relationship with a married person is not pure love, don't you think? Don't you even understand that? You're saying that having a relationship with a married person is the lowest thing. I can't help it. It's not something that can be excused by saying, I can't help it. Do you have any awareness of that? What about being young? Just being young has value. Do you understand that? You don't have any awareness, so you contact me like this. Am I being made fun of, or are you jealous? I'm not making fun of you, and I'm not jealous. I'm just disgusted. Is that so? You've been talking to me like you're so great since earlier. Are you aware that you're having an affair with a married man, having a deep relationship, and destroying his family? So what? It can't be helped. I'm more attractive as a woman and as a person than you, an old lady. Do you realize how much that diminishes your value as a person? Diminishes my value as a person? That's not true at all. Yes, it is. You'd see it if you thought about it calmly. It doesn't diminish my value as a person. We're just cultivating pure love. Is that so? You're just preoccupied with Kit and can't make a sound judgment anymore, aren't you? That's none of your business, old lady. Whether it's pure or not, it doesn't matter anymore. But you're calling me an old lady. But Kit is a 36-year-old man, isn't he? Don't compare Kit with an old lady like you. To someone in their 20s like you, 36 is an old man or an old lady, isn't it? Kit isn't an old man. What is that supposed to mean? You're just treating Kit differently from others. Kit is different. Age doesn't matter because he's cool. Besides, the value of age is entirely different between men and women. What exactly is the difference between us? Please tell me. I'm not a middle-aged woman who just gets older like you. He's becoming more and more handsome as he ages. I've never felt like he's an old man. What is that supposed to mean? You're jealous of the relationship between Kit and me, aren't you? I'm not jealous. I'm just disgusted. That's a lie. 
You don't have to pretend to be strong. I'm not pretending to be strong. I'm really just disgusted with the relationship between you and him. Disgusted? You don't need to make excuses like that. Middle-aged women can only be jealous, right? You're really a pitiful middle-aged woman. I don't care if I'm pitiful middle-aged woman or whatever. You can say whatever you want. Do you know what Kit is saying to me? I don't know. There's no way I would know that. Kit, who is a doctor with an annual income of 20000 is saying he wants to marry me. Is that a lie? Kit said that to a young girl like you? What is Kit saying? I can't believe it. I'm so disgusted. I can't even speak. I'm not just a young girl. I'm already an adult. If you're already an adult, then you should really think about what you're doing. You're not my parent, so you don't need to say that to me. And there's no need for you to worry about that either. What do you mean there's no need to worry about it? Well, if Kit's father is a doctor with his own practice, you know, if we get married, Kit will be the successor to the clinic and our future will be secure. Are you sure about that? Even if you become an old lady like me, you might still be cheated on, you know? That's only for old ladies. Don't make me laugh. And that big house behind the clinic? That's his house, right? Yes, but how did you find out about it? Where did you get this information? I know everything about him, remember? Besides, it doesn't matter where the information came from, does it? Yeah, I guess not, but I was just curious. If you really want to know, I can tell you. No, it's okay. It was from my grandfather. Your grandfather? Yes! Apparently my grandfather knew the former head of the clinic, and he told me a little bit about it. I see. Also, my grandfather told me to go to medical school. Really? So you didn't go to medical school by choice? Well, yeah, something like that. Your grandfather wants you to become a doctor. I just happened to have a good head and got into medical school. I'm not trying to praise you or anything, but there are people who want to become doctors but can't get into medical school. It's amazing. Why don't you take more pride in yourself? Why should I? I'm not particularly interested in becoming a doctor. Besides, studying is a hassle, and honestly, I don't want to study anymore. So you're just smart, that's all. What do you mean, just? Anyway, let's get back to the point. When I was thinking that studying was a hassle and I didn't want to do it anymore, I met him! Oh, really? That's interesting. At a mixer that I just happened to attend, a handsome doctor named Kit with an annual income of 20000 showed up. Wait a minute, you met Kit at a mixer? Yes, he was there at the mixer. Kit, he's really the worst. That's not true. When I talked to him, he was interesting, handsome, older, and very charming. Was it because you heard about his income and that he was a doctor? It's not that simple. When I was talking to him, it turned out that he was the son of the director who my grandfather was indebted to, and I felt a sense of destiny with Kit. Even though Kit is married, he still goes to group dates. But Carolina, aren't you crazy to feel destiny with a stranger you just met at a group date? That's why you'll be dumped for making such a fuss over such a small matter, old lady. What's with that tone of yours? Are you okay? It's natural for old people to have a rigid mindset. You say that I'm making a fuss over a small matter, but is what you're doing a small matter? I don't think so. Anyway, break up with Kit as soon as possible. First, you suddenly contact me, and now you're telling me to break up? We truly love each other. Yeah, sure. Purely. You're the one who's getting in our way. You're so rude. Who's the one causing trouble here? Is that so? I'm just expressing my opinion. Besides, you must be thinking that I'm the one who ruined your relationship with him. But he chose me, so it can't be helped. I'm really annoyed with you too. But I'm also very angry with Kit for attending matchmaking parties without regard for his position and even getting involved with a female college student. I don't care how you feel or how frustrated you are right now. That's right. Anyway, I want him to break up with you as soon as possible. It's not just my problem, so even if you ask me to break up with him right away, I can't give you an answer right away. I want to be with Kit as soon as possible. I understand, so I will contact you later about the divorce. Really? Will you divorce him for me? Anyway, let me talk to Kit first. I didn't know he had such a deep relationship with you. I understand, so I'll wait for your divorce notice, please. Just before that, one piece of advice for you. Advice? What is it? You said you know everything about Kit, 
But do you really? What do you mean? You should know more about Kit. It's better to understand him. I know enough about him. Such advice is not necessary for me, Auntie. Is that so? Otherwise, your life will end up in ruin. What's that? You're really pathetic, Auntie. Are you threatening me? It's useless. I gave you advice. That's all. Okay, I understand. Anyway, I want to be with him as soon as possible, so I'll wait for the divorce notice. After half a year. Long time no talk. Sorry for getting back to you so late. Auntie, what? Did you get divorced? We finally got divorced. Did you really get divorced? I was waiting for that news. Oh, I see. As you wished. Kit and I got divorced. Finally divorced! Why did it take so long to get divorced? I've been asking you to get divorced quickly. Do you think it's easy to get a divorce? It's not just dating. It's more complicated when you're married. Here comes your preaching again. You're such a rude child. It's not about dating. Divorce involves families too, which is why it took so long. Are you saying that it's Kit's family? Are you trying to blame it on Kit? It's not like that. Weren't you the one that didn't want to divorce him? Isn't that why it took so long? Even if I say we're different, you only care about him and don't listen to me, right? That might be true. Anyway, getting married or getting divorced is different from when you're just dating like lovers. When you get married, it's not just you and him. It's complicated because the other family members are involved too. Are you making excuses? You're really good at sour grapes. It's obvious. Is that so? I'm finally divorced and feeling refreshed. I don't think so. I thought it was just an excuse from an older woman. Anyway, you're divorced now, so don't stick around Kit. That's my line. I'm not going to cling to Kit. Besides, I even reported the divorce to you. Are you satisfied? Yes! So don't cling to me either. I'm not going to cling to you. Don't cling to me either, old lady. Of course not. If Kit pays you money, it will all be over. That's right. So from now on, don't have anything to do with him. Promise me. That's what I want to say. I hope Kit will leave cleanly like this. What are you talking about? You're the one who got dumped. You're a strange person. Well, anyway, I've reported the divorce, so I have no use for you anymore, right? That's right, old lady. I wish you happiness in the future. Goodbye. Some days later. Hey, Auntie. Auntie, again? What's up? I already told you about the divorce. I don't see what else you could want from me. I have something else to talk to you about. What now? When are you going to move out of that house? That house? Do you mean the one behind the clinic? Yes. When are you going to move out? You're divorced from him now, so why don't you just leave already? I'm planning to move into an apartment near my university at the end of this month. So, Auntie, when are you going to move out? You're asking me out of nowhere. You're so close to your university, it's a waste to move out. What are you talking about? I want to become a glamorous housewife as the future wife of the next clinic director, even if I have to move today. What is that? You're ridiculous. If you want to marry Kit, it's up to you, but shouldn't you graduate from college first? You always say things like my mother, auntie. I have more life experience than you, so I want to tell you many things. It has nothing to do with your life. You're divorced, so get out of here, old lady. What about college? I don't care about college. It's none of your business. It doesn't concern you, right? It may not concern me, but you say you want to be a housewife, but are you giving up on becoming a doctor? I never really wanted to be a doctor in the first place. I just wanted to marry Kit and have a luxurious life. Oh, I see, but becoming a doctor yourself would make you even more of a celebrity, don't you think? I don't want to study anymore, and I don't intend to become a doctor. So you're planning to marry him without even graduating from college? That's right. So actually, I've already dropped out of college by myself. Are you kidding me? I can't believe it. You're almost done with university, aren't you? Don't you think all your previous studies would go to waste if you quit now? But I have Kit! That may be so, but... Kit is a doctor with an annual income of 200000 and if we get married, we'll be set for life! I don't mind being unemployed, so I've dropped out of university already. I understand your determination to be with him, but... My preparations are going smoothly. Are you sure you're okay? What do you mean? Are you really going down on a path of self-destruction while misunderstanding everything? What do you mean by that? Is everything okay with your head? I'm gonna marry Kit and be happy from now on. I wonder if you'll really be happy. 
What's the misunderstanding? That's not your own life, it's mine. I'm not sure about that. What are you trying to say? There's nothing for you to worry about. Do you really know everything about him? That's why I'm saying this. Anyway, can you start preparing to leave the house soon, Auntie? Um... What? Do you have something else to say? Why do I have to leave my parents' house? Huh? What are you talking about? That house is not your parents' house, right? That house is my parents' house. That was before the divorce. It's not your house anymore. It was Kit's family house to begin with. Please start preparing to leave soon. You really don't know anything. What do you mean? This house is my parents' house. You still don't understand? Huh? Are you kidding me? The house is your parents' house? Yes. Not Kit's family's house? No, I said it's my parents' house, so I have no intention of leaving this house. Huh, what do you mean? It's your parents' house? How did this happen? What's going on? Are you in contact with Kit? Haven't you heard anything from him? I've been busy lately, so he hasn't been in touch much. What do you mean, I haven't I heard anything? That's right. What do you mean, that's right? I think Kit is busy now, so let me explain instead. What's going on? I don't understand. I'm sure he hasn't told you the whole truth, so please calm down and listen. What are you even talking about? Actually, even after the divorce, Kit was asking me to get back together with him. Get back together? Kit, that can't be true. It's a lie. But I don't want to get back together with him, and he finally realized that it's impossible. What are you talking about? Are you making things up? No, I'm not. Please listen to me first. All right, fine. And then he was forced to return to the countryside. What do you mean? Why? I don't understand. That's why I think he's having a really busy day right now. Why the countryside? What do you mean by forced to return? I can't understand the situation at all. Explain it properly. He was forcibly returned to his hometown, which is his family's home in the countryside. Huh? His family's home is in the countryside? So that means that house isn't actually his? Exactly. That's what it means. Why was he forced to return? When will he come back? I don't know when he'll come back. You should ask him. But he's a doctor. Doesn't he have a job as a doctor? Then why does he need to go to the countryside? That's not the point. I'm the doctor. Kit is not a doctor or anything. What are you talking about? Kit is a doctor, isn't he? That's a lie. The one with the annual income of 200000 is me. Huh? Not Kit? No. That's all Kit's made-up story and lies. What? All the is a lie? That's impossible. I am the doctor with the 200000 annual income, not Kit. That's... That can't be right. Kit wouldn't tell such lies, and that house is his family home. How long are you going to believe what he says? This house is my family home. The clinic behind the house is run by my father. And I'm the next director, not Kit. That's... Then what does he do if Kit's not a doctor? Kit is unemployed. He doesn't work. Is that a lie? He's unemployed? It's not a lie. Kit was running a factory with his parents. However, the factory went bankrupt six months after we got married. Since then, Kit has been unemployed under the guise of job hunting. Is that a lie? That's impossible. Such a lie. And on top of that, he's not working? He used to complain at home that job hunting wasn't going well, but in reality, he was living a life of partying and going to mixers. What is that? That's not the kid I know. I know, right? But an unemployed man wouldn't be popular at mixers, would he? Yeah, you're right. That's why he used my status. I didn't feel like he was making up stories, though. Maybe that's true. Maybe because he's seen me working as a doctor up close, it felt authentic. But he's not a doctor. There's no way he makes 200000 a year. This is just unbelievable. What am I supposed to do? Even if you ask me how I'm supposed to handle this, I don't know what to tell you. I just told you the truth. Why didn't you tell me earlier? Kit has already confessed to you. Confessed what? That he enjoyed playing with girls who were attracted to the status of a high-income doctor, and Caroline was one of them. What? You're saying that I was just a fling to him? What is that? How could he do this to me? I think he's busy now but it would be good if you could talk to him and sort things out. I was seriously considering marrying Kit. When he begged for forgiveness and didn't want a divorce, he confessed everything. I don't want to hear that. In the end, I couldn't forgive him, and we got divorced, remember? Now he's back in the countryside, working multiple jobs with his parents to pay off a large debt. That's impossible! 
I can't believe he lied to me like this, but I guess this is the truth. Yes, actually, I felt sorry for Kit and his parents. My father and I were going to partly help pay off their debt out of kindness. But when your affair with Kit came to light, it destroyed our relationship and family, and the idea of helping with the debt disappeared. I never thought it would come to this. Yeah, he only told you lies. Kit's parents were shaken when they heard that the debt repayment plan was off the table. Yeah, that makes sense. And Kit came with tears, apologizing and begging not to divorce him. He kept saying it over and over again, but I couldn't forgive what you and he did. I don't believe that story. You just made it up, didn't you? I understand that you don't want to believe it, but it's the truth. But you're already divorced, right? You're just trying to separate me from him now. That's not true, and I don't want to break you two up. It's impossible for Kit not to be a doctor. If you insist, why don't you ask your grandfather? Yeah, I'm sure my grandfather knows. Yeah, maybe he remembers when I was a child. It's only a matter of time before your grandfather hears about what you've done, right? That's... How do you think your grandfather would feel about his grandchild committing an act of theft? What do you want to achieve by blaming me like this? Also, didn't you go to medical school on the orders of your grandfather? And yet, if he found out that you quit, what do you think he would say? It's none of your business! Don't you think there will be consequences for dropping out of school? Stop saying whatever you want. I'll prove that you're lying. One month later. Um, so you're not going to contact me anymore, Auntie? Well, actually, I have a request. A request? What is it? Actually, I've run out of money, and I have nowhere to stay anymore. So that's why you contacted me? I just need a little bit of money. Please? What are you saying now? I don't have any obligation to lend you money. Please, can you just help me out a little bit? If you need to rely on someone, why don't you rely on Kit, your true love, who you love so much? Kit is not an option anymore. Really? Weren't you supposed to get married? I still can't get in touch with him. I see. So why are you contacting me? What nerve do you have to do with that? I had a serious talk with my grandfather. Well, I already know that Kit is not a doctor and that he lied. Finally, you understand that what I've been saying is all true. Yeah, so I'm done with him now. So that means that you talk to your grandfather and your parents about it, right? Yeah. Well then, why don't you just go back home? My whole family is really angry with me for what I did this time. I can imagine. But that doesn't mean you should rely on me. But I'm too scared to contact my parents. I definitely can't go back home. But if you have no money, what other choice do you have but to go back? I don't even know how to face them. But you were the one who messed up, right? Yeah, but... Well, it's better than just getting punished for it, isn't it? I just hate being scolded. I'm not asking anything in particular from you this time. It's good that it ended without any serious consequences. You should think seriously about how grave of a sin it is to break up a family and reflect on it. Explain it properly to your parents and go back home. I don't want to, because if I explain it to my father, he'll definitely get angry. You did something like that, so you'll have to tell your father everything and reflect on it at home. I don't want to! Even if you say that, I have no intention of lending you any money. Fine then, how about this? I'll return Kit to you. So even though you got divorced, and Kit and you will get remarried and everything, it will be back to how it was before. That way, it'll be like nothing ever happened, right? Do you even understand what you're saying? You can't just pretend like nothing happened now. Please! So please tell my parents that I'm not angry anymore and forgive me. Please, pretty please. Why should I do something for you? Because I'm being scolded for having an affair. What do you think would happen if they found out that I dropped out of school too? Haven't you told your parents about that yet? I'm scared to tell them. You're always relying on others. But everything you've done is your fault. Reflect on yourself properly. You're the one who did something that will make them angry. Don't ask for any more help and figure it out on your own. Why did this have to happen to me? Also, you said you would return Kit, but I'll pass. I have no intention of getting back with Kit, and I don't want anything to do with someone who cheats. And finally, a word of advice, life is not easy. There are many things in life that won't work with such a sweet way of thinking like yours. Thereafter. It's such a waste that someone who could get into medical school would ruin their life like this. This incident made me think about the difference between being able to study and being smart. In the end, after running out of money, Carolina had no choice but to return to her parents' house. Of course, they were very angry about the affair, 
and it seems like Carolina was scolded severely to the point where her expulsion was revealed. University is a big turning point in life, and it's such a waste to ruin it for one man's sake. Parents can't stay quiet either, can they? Carolina was severely scolded by her parents and was mentally exhausted. She came to apologize with her grandfather in such a miserable state, looking much older than her 20s due to the stress. And then her grandfather said he would make her work at a civil engineering company in the remote mountains where there were only elderly people in order to make her reflect on her actions. If she had become a doctor, she might have been able to live a luxurious life without relying on a man. For her, a harsh workplace like a civil engineering company might be good for making her reflect on herself. There will likely be many men, and it may be perfect for Carolina, whose only asset is being young. As for me, I was able to separate from my cheating husband, and I don't have to worry about money. Meeting her made me realize that I should pursue what I want, and have a fulfilling life. Where are you now? What's up? What's wrong? I was wondering how you're doing right now. Are you staying over at my house tonight? Why the sudden question? That's strange. I won't be staying at your place tonight. It's my last night as a single woman, after all. I was thinking of staying at my parents' house, if I do stay over somewhere. They also said they wanted to see me. If you're staying at your parents' house, I feel relieved. Your mother contacted me a little while ago. My mom contacted you? I was worried about you because you hadn't come home, so I was wondering if you were going to stay at my place overnight. I've really been worried about you. I'll be home soon, so don't worry. I think my parents are being just a bit sensitive, so please don't worry about it. I might have just forgotten to let them know that I was staying over at your place tonight. It's not just your parents. I'm worried about you, too. You do realize what's happening tomorrow, right? What are you doing right now? I'm enjoying some drinks because it's my last night as a single woman. Are you still drinking at this hour? Who are you with? I'm worried now that I know you're out drinking. You're exaggerating. My co-workers are throwing a celebration for me, so don't worry. You didn't have to go out today. Where are you drinking? You've been here before, right? It's a bar near my workplace. Oh, that place. It's a bit far from your parents' house. Can you get back home safely? What? Don't you trust me? I'll be fine. I'll be back in no time. You've said that before and ended up coming back in the morning, haven't you? That's in the past. Well, it wasn't just once. I'm worried. Ugh, don't treat me like a child. At least children don't stay out all night, so that's a little better. Hey, don't say anything more. That's negative. Tonight is my last night as a single woman, you know. Everyone is celebrating for me, so let me have fun and enjoy my drinks. Besides, I plan to go home early tonight. I want you to trust me. If you put it that way, I'll trust you. Tomorrow is an important day, so I'm just being cautious. I'm glad you trust me. Things are really exciting here right now so I'll fill you in later. All right, then. Talk to you later. Make sure to contact me once you get home. Of course. I'll contact you. Please, trust me. The next morning. <coughs> it's already five in the morning. Have you made it home safely since I haven't heard from you? I hope you're not still out drinking, right? Today is an important day for us. Please let me know when you see this message. I'm worried about you. Two hours later. Are you just sleeping? If that's the case, it's okay. But I'm worried that I can't reach you. I'm worried that you might have passed out somewhere. Please reply to my message if you see it. <coughs> 
I was worried because I couldn't reach you, so I contacted your parents. You didn't go back to your parents' house last night after all. They told me they had received a message late at night that you would be staying at my house last night. They were surprised to know that you didn't come to my house after I contacted them. Where are you now? You've lied to me. Please, give me a reply. Your parents are worried that you might have passed out somewhere. Please contact me as soon as you see this message. Two hours later. Hey, what's going on? I was surprised by all the messages and calls this morning. I felt scared from all this since this morning. Are you crazy for doing all this? Hey, are you kidding me? What's going on? Do you have to contact me this much? Don't you remember what day this is today? I have no idea what you're talking about. You've been acting weird all day. Let's just have fun. You're so angry. I'll ask you again. What day is today? I already told you what day it is. Are you still drunk? I'm not drunk. But yesterday was such a fun night. It was like being in a dream. The whole place was decorated and I was the star. I felt like a princess. I hate to interrupt your dream, but I have to say something. Today was supposed to be a special day. Today was our wedding day. Oh, it was our wedding day. I didn't realize. I don't know who is getting married, but congratulations to them. Hey, are you serious? This is not a joke. Seriously, stop saying things that don't make sense. Anyway, listen to me. My story is more interesting. My colleagues splurged on amazing drinks last night. Everyone treated me like a princess, and the drinks were so good, so I ended up drinking too much. That's why I don't really remember much about last night. It was like I was dreaming, and then I realized, guess where I was? In an unknown capsule hotel. I don't even remember how I checked in, but I woke up in a bed this morning. See, it's funny. Human instincts are amazing, aren't they? Are you done talking about being drunk? You seem to have so much fun that you even forgot about me and our parents. You've been unbearable since earlier today. You have a bad habit of talking about the past like that. I believed in your words from yesterday. I was worried you might have passed out somewhere, so I couldn't set down my phone. Now I'm disgusted with myself and angry more than anything. Are you done preaching? What? You ruined my good mood for nothing. I didn't contact you to hear you lecture me. I replied to your persistent messages even though I'm still not sober. You should treat people around you with more respect. Hey, hey. Do you even realize what you're saying? You're incredibly rude. The only way to forget unpleasant things is to go back to sleep. Wait a minute. Are you serious about going to sleep now? Well, I'm sleepy. There's nothing more important than sleep right now. Good night. Please, cool down while I'm sleeping. Wait a minute. This is our wedding day. Do you even know what you're saying right now? That's why I'll say it again. I'm sleepy. I was feeling so good until I was awakened by a ton of scary messages. This is not a time to joke around. Do you even know what time it is right now? Good night. And don't call or message me so much to wake me up like that again, okay? 
I don't even care anymore about what happened. One hour later. Good morning. I'm finally starting to feel clear-headed. Where do you think I was when I woke up? I was in a capsule hotel I had never seen before. Oh, good morning. You seem to be in a good mood after sleeping in twice. Last night was amazing. It's like there really are dreamlike scenes. Oh, did I tell you this story already? I feel like we talked about what day it was today before going to bed, but I really don't understand, so what day is it today after all? I do remember some things from that conversation. Well, then, try to remember what day it is now. Hmm, I don't know. I feel like you were really anxious in my dream, though. Oh, I see. Surprisingly, even when you're drunk, some things stick in your memory. Well, then, try to remember what day it really is today. What's with the attitude? Are you being sarcastic again? Well, I'm in a good mood now, so I might forgive you. But in exchange, please don't give me any trouble. All right, here's a hint. Where do you think I am, and what am I doing right now? How should I know that? Oh, right, that was rude of me. But I don't think I could say something like that if I remembered properly. I mean, you're the one who would forget what day it is today. You really have a bad attitude today, don't you? I'm being generous by forgiving you. But if it were another girl, she would have been furious by now. You should be grateful for my kindness. You think you're a kind person? Stop joking around. Look back at your messages from this morning. You haven't said a single kind word to me. Yeah, you're right. But I've always had high expectations for you and have been let down. So maybe that's why I act that way. Uh, what's your deal since earlier? I only contacted you because you were persistent and I'm still hung over. If that's the case, let's cancel today's plans. Fine? This happened because of your sarcastic remarks to your girlfriend since this morning. Today's plan is over. Let's reschedule for next week. Today was the wedding. Well, that's good, but it's none of my business. What if you attended alone? Come to think of it, were those really your parents? They were so polite and a really wonderful couple. I was surprised. What are you talking about all of a sudden? Of course they were my parents. It's natural for them to be respectable. Your parents are truly amazing. But even those great parents shed tears in front of me, and they bowed their heads many times, too. I felt so sorry for them. What do you mean by shedding tears? You didn't do anything bad to my parents, did you? If you did, I will never forgive you. Anyway, you always act like that. You're always so boring and sarcastic. No wonder my kind parents would feel like crying in front of you. Is this the kind of man who's going to be our daughter's fiancé? I see. So that's how you really feel about me. This is going to resolve what I've been wondering about for a while. Now I can finally sort out my own feelings. Yeah, I'm so tired of always being lectured as if I'm always wrong. I just want to live freely and happily. The wedding is off. Huh? Wait a minute. What do you mean it's off? Are you talking about someone else's wedding when you say wedding all the time? Are you still saying things like that at this point? I'm amazed. Hey, what do you mean? I've been saying it all along. Today is our wedding. Come to think of it, 
You've been saying something about a wedding all the time. If you're not a guest, then... Oh, that's right. Today is our wedding day. That's it. That's why we celebrated yesterday. I finally remembered. Finally? Despite today being an important day for us, you chose to drink and let loose. And you even lied not only to me, but to your parents, saying you'd be back soon. I asked you so many times, didn't I? Are you okay? Can you come back? You said you were fine. I believed your words. That's right. Why did I forget something so important like that? You said it yourself. Believe that it's okay. Because I believe that, I had the experience of my fiancé drinking too much and missing our wedding. I realize that for you, the wedding is just a trivial matter. That's not true. What's not true? Everything I said is true, isn't it? I apologize if it's about drinking too much. It was just that I went a bit overboard, thinking it was a special night before my last night as a single woman. If everyone hadn't recommended such awesome drinks to me, I could have gone home earlier. So you're saying that your colleagues who celebrated with you are responsible for you missing our wedding? I'm really disappointed. Please, let me make it up to you now. I'm truly sorry from the bottom of my heart for keeping you waiting. I was really looking forward to the wedding. Do you know why? Because I love you with all my heart. I already know your true feelings from earlier. I'll go to my parents' house right now and bring them there. It's okay. They were really looking forward to this day, too. They might complain a little, but in the end, they'll be thrilled to come. You worked so hard to wake me up because you wanted to have the wedding with me, right? Can you stop saying the same thing over and over again? The wedding has been canceled. You're too quick to be cautious now and give up. Please wait a bit, because I'm about to leave the hotel. You don't seem to fully understand, so I'll be clear this time. The wedding is canceled. Even though I told you you don't remember anything about the wedding. On top of that, when you were drunk and said I'm going to sleep again, I couldn't believe my ears. And yet you didn't wake up for a long time, did you? Do you really think we can still have a wedding at this point? I'm really sorry. I always do things innocently without any ill will. It's entirely my fault that time passed and I overslept. If today doesn't work out, let's postpone it until next week. Are you serious about that? There's no way we can do that. Don't give up. Ask the staff at the venue first. Weren't you looking forward to getting married to me, too? I'm going to my parents' house now to bring them there. Even if we can't do it today and have to postpone, I'll let them know that all you have to do is arrange with the venue. You don't know how hard it was for me to reserve this venue. It's not just the venue. I managed to find a popular planner who can fulfill your wishes. We only had one day for our wedding. I understand how much you were looking forward to today. It doesn't matter if it's not there. We can find another place to have our wedding. It seems like my true intentions haven't been conveyed clearly. So let me be more direct. I'm breaking off our engagement. In other words, I will never marry you. And I mean it. Wait a minute. This isn't like you to be so irrational. Our love can't be broken just because of a little tardiness, can it? You can say that it was just a little delay, but that's not all. 
You got drunk and missed our wedding, and you even forgot that today was your own wedding day. I can't commit my life to someone like that. I can't trust you at all. No, that's a lie. It's a bad joke. And I forgot to tell you, your parents accepted the cancellation of our engagement. What? I can't believe my parents would agree to that. My parents wanted me to be happy and were looking forward to the wedding. They never imagined that their daughter would ghost the wedding, her own wedding, by getting drunk. Your parents, who heard you forgot about the wedding and overslept, sincerely apologized to me. But why are you blaming me like this? I just got a little too happy and drank too much. I never intended to not show up for the wedding. And why are you making my parents apologize to you? You are really starting to seem like a mean person. I didn't demand an apology from them. Your parents came and apologized for their daughter's shameful behavior. They even apologized and begged for our engagement to be canceled. My parents have a terrible misunderstanding of things. Say something like, I'm not that kind of daughter. Misunderstanding? There is no misunderstanding. You didn't even bother to ask me why it happened several times, and you just kept talking about last night's drinking. And to top it all off, you told me not to lecture you? Stop looking down on me and making fun of me. I'm so confused by all this suddenness. I truly believe that I've done something wrong to you from the bottom of my heart. It's true that I love you with all my heart. Is drinking to the point of forgetting your important wedding day with your beloved something that should happen? Was the wedding nothing more than something like that to you? Anyway, I'm going to the wedding hall with my parents right now. If we talk face to face, I'm sure you'll remember how much we love each other. Please, wait just a little while. I'm going there right now. Please. You're probably in a place where you don't even know where you are, right? There's nothing for me to talk about to you. My feelings won't change at all. It's a lifelong request. Besides, neither me nor my parents can let it end like this. Let's talk about the future with my parents involved. If you're going to say that much, I'll wait a little. But I'm not waiting for you. It's to ease the pain of your kind and wonderful parents. My decision to break off the engagement with you hasn't changed. You'll surely change your mind once you meet me. I'll hurry and come see you. So wait without moving until I arrive. One hour later. Still not here yet. It's been over an hour since your last message. Did you break your promise again? Your parents arrived right after that. I've been apologizing to your parents since then. I was foolish to trust you. I'm sorry. I have some trouble and can't come right away. What? You made me wait this long and now you can't even come? What are you talking about? How far are you going to underestimate people? This is really different. It is true. I tried to head to the wedding venue like I promised, but I really couldn't make it. If you hear the reason, you'll definitely understand, too. Explain it properly. I'll hear your last excuse. Your parents are here, too. I left the hotel right away, but I got caught up in trouble. I'm at the hospital right now. Hospital? I was in a hurry and got into an accident, and now I'm receiving treatment. If you think that's a lie, I'll have the hospital staff prove it to you from my phone. What's going on? I wanted to see you as soon as possible, but the venue was farther away from the capsule hotel than I thought. 
I didn't have enough money to take a taxi, and public transportation would have taken too long. But then I remembered that a friend of mine lives nearby, so I begged her and managed to borrow a motorcycle. So you drove an unfamiliar motorcycle in a hurry, and that's how you got into a traffic accident and were taken to the hospital? Exactly. It all happened because I wanted to respond to your love. I wanted to see you, hug you, and clear up the misunderstanding. But love can be cruel sometimes. I was taken to the hospital by a rescue team, and they told me I had a broken right leg. That's unfortunate. Your friend who lent you the bike is probably regretting it by now. It's really audacious of me to ask for a favor after making you wait like that. Is it possible for you and our parents to come to this hospital? What are you thinking, really? I'm tired of hearing your bad jokes. If your parents were truly worried about you, I might understand. But why should I go out of my way to come and see you? I was so desperate to think that you were waiting for me. I don't think I could have done all of this if I didn't truly love you. Can't you understand my feelings? Well, it's a pity you got injured. The hospital staff who have to take care of you must be having a hard time, too. The fracture is severe, so it looks like I'll have to rest in bed for a while. I think this is a message from God telling us that the wedding cannot take place today anyway. No, that's definitely not it. If you hadn't drunk too much the night before and forgotten about the wedding, you wouldn't have needed to ride the bike in the first place. If you didn't have to ride the bike, your friend's bike wouldn't have broken down and you wouldn't have gotten injured. It's because of my love for you that I said these things. Don't you think it's cruel to make your sweet girlfriend say things like that? There's one thing I'm certain of now. Good, I'm glad. You finally realize how much I love you. I'm glad I decided to break off our engagement. A woman who is reckless, unplanned, and ignores other people's feelings cannot be called a partner. I despise people who force their feelings onto others and drag them into their problems. There is only one thing I'm grateful for. I found out about your true nature before our wedding. If you think about it, this incident was a good lesson that prevented my life from being messed up. Be honest with me. You shouldn't really be thinking about breaking off our engagement. I've already told you many times I'm breaking off our engagement. We're supposed to be the ones who promised to get married. And on top of that, I got into an accident trying to come to see you. I broke bones and I'm injured and unable to move for a while. You should be grateful. You should be thankful that you even survived the motorcycle accident. Besides, this experience should have been good medicine for you. That's not good at all. Despite this, it was to be a joyous occasion. I feel terrible. Do you know how many times you failed and made a fool of yourself because of alcohol? You're the type of person who causes big trouble when you get drunk. If you've learned your lesson, then drink in moderation from now on. I get that you're angry enough already. From now on, I won't even drink any more. I'm truly sorry what happened this time. So won't you give me one last chance? I want you to stay with me, at least until I recover from my injuries. Let's start over again, just the two of us. When I think about what's to come, I feel so lonely and anxious right now. I'm sorry, but I have to refuse. Why should I, a stranger, be the one to stay by your side? There are medical professionals in the hospital, aren't there? I'm not your personal caregiver. Besides, I have to proceed with canceling our engagement. 
Since you can't move, I'll take care of it from here. If your signature is required, I'll let you know, and I'll take care of it. So please don't worry. Why does it have to be like this? We made a vow to each other to get married. Are you just going to abandon me so easily after I got hurt? Even though I'm apologizing to you like this, if you're an adult, you should let this go and come hug me. I'm sorry, but we can't discuss this between us. It's getting out of hand, so if you contact me directly from now on, please be aware that I will have a lawyer present. What? A lawyer? Hey, are we really going to end things like this? Wait a minute. Let's calm down. We still have time to make this work. Yeah, I wish it could have worked out. But you didn't just miss the wedding. You forgot about it, didn't you? Before you drink yourself into oblivion, I wanted you to think about what really matters to you. Please, don't let this end. Hey, please, answer me. Thereafter. Catherine resisted quite a bit, but we ended up breaking off the engagement. After that, Catherine was apparently severely scolded by her parents and relatives. There was a cancellation fee for the venue, but Catherine's parents offered to pay it, so I didn't have to. Catherine's parents apparently even signed a contract with her to repay the entire amount not only for the wedding cancellation fee, but also for the damages caused by our friend's broken bike. They are naturally being sued for compensation. Afterwards, Catherine apparently also lost her job. It seems she had already used up all her vacation pay. In addition, it seems she repeatedly showed up late or missed work due to drinking too much. It might be accurate to say that alcohol really ruined her life. She ran out of money and was forced to leave her apartment. Now she's living at home. Not only was she fired from her job, but apparently she can't even do household chores, and her parents lecture her every day. Her parents are kind enough to let her stay at home, but they said that as soon as she recovers from her injury, they will kick her out and she's begging them not to. But I hope this experience will make her naturally run towards sobriety. She shouldn't make the same mistakes in her life and hurt someone else when she walks her path in the future. I want her to be happy and not cause trouble for anyone. Meanwhile, as for me, actually I hit it off with a classmate I met after a long time, and our romance is about to begin. Since our relationship has just started, we're not thinking about marriage yet, but it's a fact that I'm feeling a bit cautious. There is one thing I can be sure about, though. That's because my girlfriend is someone who doesn't drink alcohol at all. So she won't have to suffer from losing important time due to drinking too much and getting hurt because of it. I sincerely hope that she won't encounter similar troubles in the future. Hi, Ease. How are you? Can I contact you now? Are you at home now? Oh, hi, Freya. It's rare for you to contact me. Is something wrong? Is there something work-related that you need to discuss with me since you're contacting me like this? Is it really so unusual for me to message you? And are you implying that I only contact you for work-related matters? Are you complimenting me or belittling me? Well, let's not get sidetracked. Let's get to the point quickly. I have work that needs to be taken care of by tomorrow. Well, never mind that. As you wish, let's get to the main point. I didn't contact you about work. I was just curious since you're home today. Does that mean you don't have a date with your boyfriend? Boyfriend? Are you talking about Melio? Unfortunately, I don't have plans with him tonight. But why do you care about my date with Melio? Huh, <laughs> why do I care? Are you really asking me that? Well, it seems you're just as clueless as usual. Freya, what's the matter? Why are you suddenly messaging me? Also, what do you mean by something strange? I don't understand. Are you trying to say that I'm slow and I haven't noticed anything? What are you talking about exactly? 
I don't understand the meaning. Can you explain it properly instead of joking around? Okay, let's stop joking around then. Before I explain it clearly so even you, my slow senior, can understand, what kind of relationship do you have with Melio? For example, have you been on a date or had a meal together at home recently? Have you done any of those kinds of things with Melio? Well, if you ask me, I don't think we've been doing those kinds of things recently. Also, Melio hasn't responded to my calls or messages lately. Plus, we haven't even met recently, so maybe we won't even contact each other anymore. It seems like we might break up. Oh my, that's too bad, isn't it? <laughs> then let me ask one more thing based on that. Are you going to break up with him? Break up? Well, as a possibility it could happen. Judging from his behavior, Melio might have changed his mind. Or, more simply put, he might have found someone else he likes. We might not even see each other anymore. That seems to be the case. Oh my, that's unfortunate, isn't it? <laughs> Ease, do you feel regretful right now? Do you feel frustrated that Melio was taken away from you? Freya, you're the one that needs to stop joking around. I already answered your questions, so can you please answer my question? Why have you been asking me all these things? Also, every time you speak, you keep mentioning Melio Melio. What's going on between you and Melio? Well, well, don't worry. You'll understand soon enough. I just wanted to know how it feels to have a rich and handsome boyfriend like Melio taken away by someone else. That's all. LOL. Unfortunately, I've never had the experience of having my boyfriend stolen from me, so I'd like you to teach me all about it. LOL. If that's the case, let me ask you one more thing. When did I ever talk to you about Melio? You don't even know his contact information or anything about his profile, right? Well, that's true. I guess I can tell you the truth. Remember the girls' party we had back in college that you and I attended? At that party, Melio came to pick you up and you introduced him to me. LOL. Maybe you tasted too much wine with cooking at the girls' party and your memory got fuzzy? LOL. Come to think of it, I remember going to the bathroom before I left. I think I saw you talking to Melio intimately while I was gone. Could it be at that time? Bingo! LOL. Exactly that time! LOL. While you went to the bathroom after having a little too much to drink, Melio and I exchanged contact information, so we've been dating since then. LOL. Since that time, while I was gone for a little bit to the bathroom, you two had that kind of friendship? He, <laughs> you're not surprised, are you? LOL. Thanks to you going to the bathroom, I was able to meet my ideal boyfriend, Melio. And since he was my type at first sight, I stole him behind your back. And it seemed like he liked me just as much. So it was easy to steal him. LOL. You're like a sneaky cat burglar. So maybe that's why Melio hasn't been seeing me lately. Yes, as you guessed, he's been seeing his new lover, me, and spending time with me, lol. Thanks to you being slow, I was saved. I was able to have many thrilling secret dates with Melio, you know, ha. <laughs> I see. If you point out that I'm slow, I guess I have to reflect on it too. He, <laughs> thank you for your words of sour grapes. By the way, friend, do you remember this? Remember what? Remember what? Back in college, Ash had a crush on me, remember? You know, the guy who was your boyfriend before. The one you liked so much that you wanted to marry him. <laughs> Ash? Oh, yeah, I remember him. And when I think about it, you were the reason he changed his mind. <laughs> That's such a nostalgic memory, isn't it? I dated him because he had a nice face, just like Melio. But he was boring and serious like you, friend. So I dumped him easily. <laughs> you just dumped him? Honestly, you're like a child. You played with your favorite toy and then get bored with it, so you threw it away, just like what you did to Ash. Say whatever you want. That's my way of life. Later, my friends told me that Freya seems to have stolen several other people's boyfriends besides Ash. And when I introduced Melio to you, I thought you would jump at the chance. I may have underestimated the greed and obsession of a thief cat like you. Oh my, are those compliments? Thank you very much. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, I hate to say it myself, but it's true, isn't it? Haha. <laughs> it's all because the men I've met so far have fallen from me. I'm really too charming for my own good. Haha. <laughs> Do you know what it's called when you praise yourself? Self-praise. And because of that, did you not realize that your female friends at the last girls' night out were looking at you with disgust? And when you appeared with me at the girls' night out, they muttered, Why did she come? I don't know what you're talking about. As I said earlier, the problem is that I have too much charm, that's all. 
Besides, he's your precious boyfriend. Shouldn't you make sure to keep him close? It's not because those women who didn't do that and those who got taken away didn't have any charm, right? You're shameless to an impressive degree. It's actually refreshing to think you were this much of a villain. Why couldn't I have noticed your true nature until now? Thank you for your kind words again, lol. Well, it's always the fault of my dull senior and other charmless woman. Anyways, friend, please give up thinking that you'll have any luck this time too, lol. Then let me ask you one more thing, Freya. Are you really dating Melio? And how far has that relationship developed? What's with these questions? Why are you trying to achieve by asking me this? You don't really think that if you ask that, you'll find a way to get back to Melio, do you? That doesn't matter to me. As my final request, I just want you to answer the questions I want to ask. Are you really dating Melio? How far has that relationship developed? What's going on? Hmm. <laughs> well, if you insist, I can answer as your cute junior. LOL. Yes, we really are dating, Melio and I. And to be honest, I wanted to keep this secret a little longer. Actually, I'm pregnant with Melio's child, and that's how we managed to get engaged, LOL. What? You're pregnant? And that's how you're getting married to Melio? That's right. And to tell you the truth, I quit my job to get married to him. Now all that's left is the wait for our wedding to start and our wonderful newlywed life to begin, LOL. I'm really sorry I've enslaved him with my charm twice now. And thank you so much for accompanying this wonderful man that is Melio. I see. I can't believe it ended up like this. Ha ha ha, I answered your questions, so now can you answer mine? How do you feel now that Melio was stolen from you, and I even got pregnant and married? LOL. Well, if we had been dating normally, as you say, I probably would feel frustrated, but that's not the case. I'm not feeling upset. In fact, I'm grateful to you. Wow, I never expected things to work out so well. Thank you, Freya. You're good at playing dumb, but I never thought that I would be saved by you. Huh? Wait, what are you suddenly talking about? What do you mean by gratitude? Are you saying that you're grateful because I took your boyfriend out of jealousy and spite? LOL. Unfortunately, I'm perfectly sane, and I'm truly grateful for you. Before I reveal everything, let me ask you something, Freya. Did you get pregnant and marry him just to spite me? What? What are you talking about? Of course not. I just wanted to marry Melio because he's cool, and I got pregnant because I wanted to. Oh, I see. LOL. Sorry for asking such a dumb question. Anyway, congratulations on your marriage, lol, and thanks for taking that man off my hands, Freya, lol. Wait, what are you talking about? What's so funny? If you're trying to make fun of me, I'll get seriously angry. Well, then let's stop making fun of each other and get to the point. The truth is, Melio and I stopped being a couple a long time ago. Huh? And right after I introduced him to you, I broke up with him. I didn't want you to know that we had already broken up because I thought you wouldn't be interested in him anymore. I was afraid you would lose interest in him, so I kept it a secret until now. What's that? I don't understand. If that's the case, then why did you and Melio break up, Ease? It's ridiculous to let go of such a handsome and wealthy guy like Melio willingly. Melio isn't as good a person as you say he is. At first, he aggressively approached me, saying I was just his type. So I decided to give him a chance and accept him as my boyfriend, because he seemed honest, friendly, and had a good personality. But gradually, I began to see his true nature and wanted to break up with him. His true nature? He's a possessive guy who gets angry easily and has stalker tendencies. He's also a mama's boy and is in debt. What? After he revealed his true nature, he became increasingly difficult to handle, and I wanted to break up with him. But he wouldn't let me go. I was afraid he might hold a grudge against me, so I took advantage of your personality to make him break up with me. Thanks to you, Freya, I was able to let go of Melio. Wait a minute, what do you mean by that? He's a possessive stalker with mama issues and in debt? I've never heard any of that from him and that's impossible. Melio was kind and tolerant to me and he never got angry or tried to control me. That's the same with me. At first, he was an honest, friendly, kind, and tolerant guy. But gradually, his true nature emerged. Even if I talked on the phone with a male coworker for work-related reasons, he'd get angry and accuse me of cheating. He also demanded that I share my GPS location with him, which was abnormal and made me feel like he was dangerous. By the way, Melio is capable of doing his job and earns a decent living, but he also has a side where he wants to show off. He spends more than he earns and makes stupid purchases on his credit card, so his debt has become quite large. That's, that's a lie, right? 
I can't believe Millie was that kind of guy. I thought I could marry into a wealthy family, and today I even resigned from my job. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> but he's cool, faithful, and makes a decent living. So what's the problem? Well, if you ignore the fact that he's a big spender, lol. This isn't a joke. This isn't funny. Melio asked me to stay at home and support him, so I was planning on living a leisurely life without working. This is like being deceived. I think he just wanted to feel at ease with you staying at home. He asked me to do the same thing, to quit my job and stay at home with him. It was too one-sided, so I refused naturally. After that, he got angry and made a fuss, but I managed to get through it somehow. LOL. Why did you introduce him to me? Huh? Why did you introduce such a man to me? Are you trying to get back at me for stealing your man? Get back at you? Well, I did feel like I wanted to repay you for snatching Ash away and treating him so poorly, but I don't remember ever introducing Melio to you as someone I wanted you to date. Besides, you went and started dating Melio on your own, and even carry his child. In other words, Freya, it's completely your own fault. That's not- Are you kidding me? How am I supposed to let go of that man? How can I ever break up with him? I don't think it's appropriate for you to ask me about that. I don't think it's easy for Melio and you to break up. Well, now that you're married, the restrictions will only get worse, won't it? Well then, why don't you just go out with Melio again? It's that simple. I wouldn't have tried to get involved with a guy like him if I had known. And besides, he was originally yours. So I'll give him to you, Ease. As long as I get my money from Melio, I'll be fine. Oh dear, I thought you'd come to that conclusion, but that's such a pointless idea. Unfortunately, there's no chance I'll start over with someone like Melio. Besides, I'm getting married soon. Huh? What'd you say? What do you mean by that? Explain. Well, it means exactly what I said. I'm asking what you mean by that. Answer me. Actually, I've been in contact with Ash, the guy you dumped. Ash felt responsible for having relations with someone other than me when he broke up with me and started dating you. But after being easily discarded with the words boring man, Ash realized how shallow he had been. So he came to me and said, I was really foolish, I'm sorry, and begged me to at least let us be friends since we can't start over. At first, I couldn't forgive Ash, but after hearing his sincere apologies many times, my heart gradually moved towards forgiving him. Even when I started dating Milio, Ash said, even if you get married, I will continue to think only of you. Even since I started dating Milio, he's been considerate of my position and hasn't contacted me. I have to admit, his behavior is admirable, but it also makes me remember the feelings I used to have for him. And during that time, Milio and I have been dating and going through a lot of trouble. Ash has always been thinking about me and worrying about me more than anything else. Then, after going through a lot with Melio, when Ash approached me again, I decided to trust him once more. So now, I'm engaged to Ash, and we'll be getting married next month. What's that supposed to mean? There's no way things would turn out like some dramatic story. So what is it then? Are you saying that you were able to be happy because of my ex-boyfriend that I dumped? That there's luck in leftovers? And that if someone throws something away, someone else will pick it up? That's just ridiculous. There's no way you would be dating my ex-boyfriend. No. You were the one who took Ash away from me in the first place. By the way, Ash has blocked you now, so there's no point in trying to contact him and get back together with him. Why? Why would Ash have a reason to block me? I don't want to fall for a woman like Freya again. That's what Ash said. Like you said, Ash is originally a serious person and he deeply regrets getting involved with you. He even said that it's embarrassing to remember it now and that it's become a shameful part of his past. That's, that's just ridiculous. Hey, please, Senior, let's trade Melio for Ash. I'm impressed that you still have the energy to say such nonsense at this point. Needless to say, the answer is no. Why? Are you saying that you wouldn't be happy if I returned the boyfriend you were dating? That you wouldn't be happy if the boyfriend that was taken from you came back? That's not what I'm saying. I'm telling you there's no way I would ever get back together with him, especially now that I know his true nature. Before you cling to me and say, I'll give him back, read the messages properly. Read every single word carefully. Otherwise, it's meaningless. Then can't you somehow make it so I don't have to quit my job? It's not a joke if I have to quit my job for a guy like him. That's too bad, but whether you quit or not, it doesn't matter. Your name was at the top of the list of candidates for layoffs next month. Huh? Me? A candidate for layoffs? At the top? That, that's a joke, right? To begin with, you've always been lazy at work. You're disliked by your colleagues, so I think it's inevitable that this happened. Well, in short, it's because of your bad behavior that this happened. Everyone dislikes me? Me? This, this, this is too much. Other people were also angry at your habit of stealing boyfriends that continued even at work. Including Melio, there were a total of six people. You went too far. You committed the outrage of stealing six boyfriends, including Melio. 
Everyone knew about my engagement, but they got fed up with you and didn't even tell you. And when you stole Margarita's boyfriend in front of Melio, that was the final straw. Margarita was really angry. She said, I thought you were my subordinate, but I didn't expect you to be such a careless woman. The, the chief was saying such things? You were probably dreaming of stealing while thinking of yourself as the main character in your student days, right? But it's too bad. This is your reality, Freya. Th this is my reality? This is impossible. My reality is at the bottom of this unhappiness. The days when I was happy and having fun with Milio and a luxurious lifestyle were all just dreams. It's a lie. It's a lie. This is just... You keep saying that it's because of your bad behavior that this happened, and that's all I can say. But as a result this time, you were saved by your bad behavior. So just this once, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to you. Thank you so much for saving me from that man. No, no, no. I don't feel happy even if you thank me like that. What am I supposed to do? Even if I had a child with him? And even if we got married? No, if it's that crazy, maybe his relationships with women are pretty loose too. Maybe the child isn't even his. No, no, you shouldn't underestimate his persistence that I mentioned earlier. I tried to escape by moving from one apartment to another, but he found my whereabouts with a detective-level investigation. I think he could find you no matter where you are, lol. Anyway, since he has the nature of controlling a woman like this, I don't think he would have a relationship with multiple people. What the heck? What are you going to do about this? It's all your fault, senior. Please tell me those things when you introduce someone, I beg you. Sigh. I'm tired of repeating and explaining. Besides, I don't really have an obligation to tell you, do I? Just give it up already, lol. I keep saying it, but he's handsome, devoted, and good at his job. What more could you ask for? Well, that's if you can overlook his personality and his extravagance, lol. That's the biggest problem, isn't it? Hey, please seriously do something about it, senior. This is not what I intended at all. Even if you say that, I think you and Melio make a good match, haha. <laughs> I'm satisfied because I could thank you for the past, make up with Ash, and even got engaged. If you also have the constraints of Melio, your bad habit of going after men will be corrected properly, won't it? Your parents, who were troubled by your bad habit, will also be relieved by this, don't you think? This is the perfect happy ending, a marriage that will make everyone happy. Oh my, this is really great news, lol. Let's both do our best to be happy from now on, okay? Lol. This is not happy news at all. What am I supposed to do now? I don't know about that. Even if I knew, I have no obligation to teach you, right? LOL. Do your best from now on, Freya, mommy. Haha. <laughs> well then, see you later. Haha. <laughs> wait, wait a minute, please. No, please wait, I'm begging you. I really didn't mean for it to end up like this. This way, I can't be the only one who's happy. It's actually hell. Please don't abandon me. Do something, please. Hello? Hello? The reply suddenly stopped coming. Did you block me? Please, I'm really, really begging you. Don't abandon me. Thereafter. After that, I received a barrage of phone calls and emails from Freya, who had fallen into a panic. When I decided to thoroughly ignore her and block her, she came to my apartment and began frantically ringing the doorbell, crying out my name. I called the police and had her taken away immediately. Next, Freya tried to retract her resignation letter that she had already submitted, but it was too late. While she was sending me triumphant messages, her resignation was accepted, and she ended up quitting the company the following month. No colleagues mourned her departure. In fact, they looked relieved that she was gone. In a last-ditch effort, Freya tried to contact other men and escape by relying on them. Unfortunately for her, Melio discovered her plan and destroyed her phone after taking away from her. Additionally, Melio's debts had reached their limit, causing his credit card to be cancelled. Finally, they couldn't even pay their rent, and they were evicted from the apartment they lived in. Despite getting married and becoming pregnant, and losing her job, Freya couldn't hide or run. In the end, she had no choice but to rely on Melio and continue to live with him. She was then forced to live with her mother-in-law to help take care of the children. However, Melio's mother was even more possessive than he was, and she was a bad parent who doted on her son. Whenever they had an argument, she would immediately take Melio's side and join in, yelling at Freya and wearing her down both physically and mentally. Freya was completely worn out by this kind of life, but she couldn't hide. Recently, a friend saw her walking in tattered clothes, looking so haggard that she was unrecognizable. I thought, this is what happens when a woman who once had a reputation for being a homewrecker falls as low as she can go. Meanwhile, I married Ash and started a new life. Unlike Freya, our marriage was celebrated by our families and friends. Now that Freya is gone, Ash and I are living a happy and fulfilling life together. Nice to meet you, Sarah. I'm Vanessa. I know we won't be friends for long, but hello. Huh? Who are you? 
How did you find my contact information? Vanessa? There's no such person in my acquaintance. I'm going to get right to it, but I want you and Harold to divorce. Harold says he'd like that too. Huh? Wait, I don't understand. Do you know Harold? What are you talking about when you say divorce? You don't understand? Harold wants to break up with you and marry me. Are you Harold's lover? Lover? Don't be silly. I'm his favorite. Harold promised to divorce you and marry me. Even if that's true, I'm Harold's wife now. No! He's serious about me. That's why I wouldn't be called a lover. You're in my way! Get a divorce now! You don't understand, do you? Well, okay, if that's true, I'm going to divorce him. But after all, I'm his wife now. I'm going to demand compensation from both you and Harold, okay? What? Harold will pay for both of us. If you want, we can pay you double what you want. Is that really alright? I think that'll hurt you later. <laughs> so pathetic. You are a loser. P pathetic? You can't say that to someone you don't know. I just told a pathetic person that she's pathetic. That's why you get your husband stolen. You don't have any common sense. I'm sure you're Harold's favorite type. A stupid girl who is just young and pretty. It seems like Harold was dating a 19-year-old student a while ago. Young and pretty? Sarah, you're so nice. Huh? No, that's not a compliment. A lot of people say I look younger than my age. The other day, a new hire told me that I looked like I was 20 years old. Huh? Are you working? How old are you really? I'm 32 years old. You're older than me? Can't believe it. Well, if you're working, you would be able to pay compensation, so I'm relieved. You do have savings, don't you? Are you kidding? Why would I save money? All my salary is invested in myself. Otherwise, I won't be able to stay young and beautiful. Huh. I pay all my salary to beauty. You see, with a woman this good, it's no wonder Harold chose me, right? I can't believe you're over 30 and you don't have any savings. We're adults, so we have to make an effort to stay beautiful. Are you disappointed that someone older than you stole Harold from you? You are, aren't you? How can someone still be this silly in their 30s? Oh, you're being a bad loser again. You must be really frustrated that you lost to an older woman. If I could marry him, it wouldn't hurt or itch. By the way, why do you want to marry Harold so much? You're asking that now? He's cool, he's kind to me. And that's not all. He works for a major IT company. Huh? He makes $150,000 a year. How nice! Beautiful me and perfect him. Don't you think we make a good couple? I don't think he's that perfect. But, okay, I'm going to divorce Harold. I no longer have affection for a man who cheats on me. I have to talk to him. Great! Thanks, Sarah! Don't forget to pay the compensation. Well... That's okay, because your rich husband pays for it. This is quite sudden, but Harold and I are getting a divorce. I love you two for being nice to me like your real daughter, but I can't stand Harold's cheating habits anymore. I'm really sorry. I heard the story from Harold. We're the ones who should apologize. We're so sorry. That's stupid, son. He said he really loves Vanessa and that he's leaving you. He has hurt you. That goes for both of us. I didn't seem to be making an effort to improve myself, and he told me that I'm not attractive to him anymore. That's how I am. That's why Harold got tired of me. He's always been a stupid kid, always getting swayed by women's appearance. I was so relieved when he married you. 
Looks like he's still a fool. Sarah, you were so kind. You helped us around the house when my husband and I hurt our backs. We're a family. Of course I would do that. We think of you as our real daughter. And Harold's sister says she wanted a sister like you. Harold is a fool, leaving us in trouble and thinks only of himself even at his age. He didn't seem to feel anything bad for you or for our family. He didn't even say he was sorry. This divorce and remarriage for his own reasons, with no regard for his family, is not going to work. I won't let him. I'm sorry. I've already made up my mind about the divorce. I have agreed, too. I care about you and your husband, and I love you, too. But I can't be with Harold. Well... If that's what you say, it can't be helped. However, I will not let him remarry. I haven't even met her yet, but from what I've heard, she's older than you guys and doesn't have much common sense. I'm worried because some of my friends have lost their family because of their weird wife. I wonder if we can get along as a family. You don't have to worry too much about that, mother. Those two aren't going to last long. They won't be laughing long. I'd say a month. Huh? What do you mean? Do you know anything? Oh, no. Don't worry too much anyway. I have to go to the divorce process now. I have decided to ask Harold and Vanessa each $22,000 in alimony. I'm sorry for you two. What are you talking about? I'll make my stupid son pay properly. Don't let it discourage you. Thank you. You too. Sarah! You take Harold in. I'm in trouble. Well, hey, Vanessa. First time in a week? Hurry up, Sarah. I want you to pick him up right away. It's impossible to be the stay-at-home wife of my dreams. What's wrong, Vanessa? Did something happen? I don't know what's going on. Can you explain it to me? He was lying! His work is a lie! His income is also a lie! It is an IT company, but he's just a regular employee and makes half of what he told me! Even the compensation to you! I was going to have Harold pay it, but he said, I can't pay it, you pay it yourself! I don't have any savings! Don't you think he's terrible? A week, huh? That was quicker than I thought. Quick? What do you mean? What's quick? One week until Harold's lies are revealed to you. I thought he was going to try a little harder. What? Did you know about it and did not tell me? Yes, I'm his ex-wife. He's just an employee with no title. Did he claim to have a great title? A manager or director? He said that he was promoted to director and that his incomes would soon be $150,000. He even gave me a business card, but it's all a lie. He was a regular employee with an annual income of $40,000. He cheated on me. It's a scam. You knew he was lying and you kept quiet. You are just as guilty as he is. I'll sue you. The day you first contacted me, you said he had an annual income of $150,000, so I thought it was strange. I didn't want to interrupt you because you were so excited to talk. You were happy to be the stay-at-home wife you dreamed of, weren't you? Though it was only for a week. You've got to be kidding! You're responsible for it too! I'm a victim of your and Harold's deception! I won't pay $22,000 in alimony! Let Harold take responsibility. The $22,000 is your fee for being Harold's mistress, and you will have to pay me exactly what you owe me. Well, well. Harold even got a fake business card for cheating. Vanessa, he loved you so much. Isn't it a woman's dream? Stop joking! Neither of us have any savings. There's no way we can pay $44,000 for the two of us. Please, Sarah, I'm going to break up with him. I want you to make sure there's no divorce or alimony. Don't be so silly. The world is not that naive to think that we can pretend the past never happened. You have parents too, don't you? 
You can ask them to help you, right? It's ugly that a good old adult would cry to their parents. Ugh! Ugly? But I can't help it. I'll ask her, wait a minute. Great! My mom can help me. But this is the last time she'll help me. She'll never help me again. Oh no. Even my own mom gave up on me. It's your fault. How far will you go to torment me? I'm glad you have a kind family. That helps me too. Well then, please pay me. Hey! Sarah, are you okay after that? Thank you for contacting me. Are you feeling down? I'm okay. Can we still contact you? It reminds you of bad things, doesn't it? No way! You two are my friends. We're not family anymore, but I'd love to stay in touch. I don't want this to be the end. Thank you, Sarah. I'm glad you said that. I'm at my parents' house right now. I told my parents about the situation, and they told me to come home for a while. Yes, that's a relief to hear. My husband and my daughter were worried about you. And Harold, you don't want to hear it, do you? It's okay, I'm a little curious. That stupid boy is feeling small in his office. Somehow they found out that he had an affair and got divorced. Well, he deserves it. Actually, his colleague was worried and contacted me, so I explained the situation to him. So it spread to the company. Harold should feel a little bad. He needs to be reminded of that. Thank you for your attention, Mother. Oh, you're not my mother-in-law anymore. I look forward to being your friend. Absolutely. Sarah, I'm so happy. Let's stay in touch. Long time no see, Sarah. How are you doing? Are you feeling sick or something? Unfortunately, I'm fine. What about you? What about an elegant stay-at-home wife? Oh, Sarah, don't say anything nasty. Today, I have a favor to ask you. I want you to lend me some money. Money? Harold, who works for a large company, doesn't make money? How much is his income? Stop being so mean! You were the one who told Harold's company about the divorce, right? That's why he couldn't stay and left the company. He sold the stock he was investing in and paid you alimony, so he really doesn't have any living expenses. When I think about it, it's your fault. Take responsibility! You're not making sense. Did you ask Harold's parents for help? They are kind people. We tried, but they seem to be rejecting Harold's calls. They won't even listen to us. I also wanted to let them know that they have a grandchild. Grandchild? You're having a baby? I don't want to be with Harold anymore, but I can't break up because of the baby. Oh, but you see, Harold is handsome, isn't he? Whether it's a boy or a girl, I think the baby's going to be very cute. Don't you want to cuddle the baby too? A cute baby who looks exactly like Harold. You'll be the first to cuddle when the baby is born. So, lend me some money? Please. Don't say stupid things. Well, the baby is innocent, so raise him or her properly. Did you tell Harold about the baby? Not yet. I just found out. I hope he acknowledges. Acknowledge? What? Wow! What are you talking about? It's Harold's child! That can't be. Harold can't have children. What? We've always wanted to have children, but we couldn't get pregnant. So at one point we had a fertility test, and then we found out it was Harold. Mice! I couldn't stand to see how Harold had a rough time after that. He became depressed, mentally unstable, ended up cheating on me, and it seems like he was dating many other women besides you. I put up with it a lot, hoping he would get back on his feet. I'm getting a divorce because of you, so I'll leave him to you. Uh, uh. Are you okay, Vanessa? So, about the baby. Oh, I don't know what you mean. And what if, 
What if this wasn't Harold's child? Am I going to be asked to pay alimony again? Oh, is it possible that the baby is not Harold's child? Well, no way, that can't be. It's Harold's child, absolutely. Have you slept with other guys in this short period of time? Oh, I wouldn't do that. Well, it doesn't matter to me. Talking about money, why don't you ask your parents? Now that they have a grandchild, they will help you. I can't rely on my parents anymore. They pay you alimony and they're not wealthy, so it's not financially possible. Hey, Sarah, I want you to keep quiet about Harold's fertility test. Please. Harold and I are strangers now, and I'm not going to blabber on about it. If your parents can't help you, why don't you contact Harold's parents? No, Harold and his parents are insulated. I'll contact them for you. You're going to be a mother. Be firm. Wait! You don't have to be superfluous! Vanessa, I've spoken with them. Yes? How was it? Can they help me? They can, depending on the conditions. What are the conditions? If you can do a DNA test and prove that it's Harold's child, they will help you financially. If I do a DNA test, if they find out the baby is not Harold's child, will I have to divorce Harold? I guess so. No kidding! I can't do DNA testing? Are the conditions somehow... No, I don't think it's negotiable. Of course. After that, Harold managed to try to contact his own family to tell them that they were going to have a grandchild so that they should stop insulating him, but they blocked him and he couldn't get in touch with them. He tried to take his wife directly to his parents' house, but Vanessa disagreed, so he hasn't seen them to this day after all. Harold got a job, but it seems he's working for less than his former company. Vanessa gave up being a stay-at-home wife and started working part-time right after giving birth. I heard that they live in an apartment with their children, three of them. So who is the father of the child after all? I am still friends with Harold's sister, and she introduced me to my new job. I met this guy at work and he proposed to me, and I just told Jessica and the others who have been so kind to me. It was a tough time, but... I owe Vanessa a lot for helping me meet the man I have today. Amelia, do you have a moment? Yes, mother. What do you need? It's about my dear daughter, Sibila. Has something happened to Sibila? I think she needs a nice boyfriend. Do you know anyone who would be a good fit? Um, even if you ask me suddenly like that, is something wrong, mother? Did Sibila say she wants a boyfriend? No, no, no. I heard you're getting married soon, right? Yes, I already told you about it, didn't I? I asked around about your fiancé. He's quite well off, isn't he? Well off? That's not the reason why I'm marrying him. That doesn't matter. The problem is that you have a suitable partner while Sibila doesn't. Wh what You're bringing that up again? You are a worthless, useless woman who is only a stepchild. Sibila is my own daughter, and she's cute and charming. If you're going to have a happy marriage, Sibila must be happier than you. As my blood-related daughter, Sibila has the right to a happier marriage than you. You're saying whatever you want as always. Comparing me and Sibila until my wedding day? Our lives aren't yours to control. You've always favored Sibila over me, your stepchild, since we were little. This time you've gone too far. I'm disgusted. We can decide who we marry and how we live by ourselves. Shush. I won't allow any rebellion or excuses. I didn't ask for your opinion. Anyway, please introduce me to a well-qualified man. I didn't mean anything difficult. Even an acquaintance of your fiancé is fine. An IT company, you said? Ideally, I'd prefer a professional, such as a doctor or lawyer. Regardless of the profession, please choose an elite over your fiancé. Uh, listen, Mom, I think Sibila should decide about her own marriage. 
I understand you're worried because she's your precious daughter, but... Yes, that's right. I'm worried, don't you understand? Sabila is my precious, adorable daughter, and I'm worried about her. That's why I want her to be happier than you. Well, you didn't even meet my fiancé because you weren't interested, remember? Of course you and your fiancé don't matter to me. I'm talking about Sabila now. She's the child I carried and gave birth to, and she is my greatest masterpiece. She's so cute and lovely, just like me. Oh, my precious child. Okay, I got it. So, you want me to introduce you to an acquaintance of my fiancé? Don't say such stupid things. If you introduce a random acquaintance, I won't accept it. What kind of man do you prefer? The condition is a high income and wealthy family background. Huh? It's not easy to find such a man with those conditions. What are you saying? What are you saying? You're going to marry a man with those conditions, right? There's no reason why Sibylla, who shares my blood, can't marry a man better than that. Ah, okay, okay, I got it. It's not easy to find a man with those conditions, so don't expect too much. More importantly, are you sure that's what Sabila wants? There's no need to ask. High income and a wealthy family, these are a must. Please find a high quality marriage partner for your sister, Amelia. Otherwise, she will be unhappy. Wait a minute, mother? Stop making assumptions and please listen to Sabila's opinion a little. Once we've decided on her marriage partner, the next thing to do is the wedding venue. You're not listening to me at all. I'm searching frantically for a good man for Sabila's sake. You got it, Amelia? Hey, Amelia? Yes, mother, what is it? What happened with the man you were talking about the other day? Um, what are you talking about? Don't play dumb. You were talking about a potential marriage partner for Sabila. There must be some good men out there, right? Well, the condition you mentioned before, it's a bit difficult, stepmother. What? What are you talking about? Hurry up and find someone! I want her to get married around the same time as you, or even earlier. Anyway, I don't want Sibylla to fall behind you. Even so, there aren't any men who meet the criteria you mentioned. How could you say that? Don't you care about Sibylla? Don't say that, please. Compared to the cute and charming Sibylla, you're not much of a woman. And yet, even someone like you can marry a man from an elite company. There's no reason why Sibylla, who shares my blood, can't do it, right? Is that really an appropriate way to ask someone for a favor? Some things never change. I understand that you love Sibylla, but aren't you underestimating me a bit too much? Even my fiancé's colleagues, it's hard to find a man with such good condition. I'm trying my best, too. It's all right. You just need more spirit and determination. <sighs> you never change. What's with the sigh? Don't be rude. Besides, you only started talking about this after I decided to get married. What do you mean? I'm trying to get Sibylla married because you're getting married. I heard rumors about your fiancé. He has a good salary and comes from a wealthy family, doesn't he? Sibylla deserves to marry someone even better and be happy. I made the criteria based on your fiancé. Basically, what you're doing is wrong, mother. Oh, what are you talking about? Did you ask Sibylla's opinion on this? She might have her heart set on someone. You shouldn't just assume and make decisions without confirming that. Shut up! Who do you think raised you well? Forgetting the gratitude for how you were raised and saying whatever you want. As someone who shares my blood, Sibylla deserves a better marriage prospect than you, don't you think? It's you who are talking nonsense! My father is my real father, and you're the one who came into our family later on. If you're going to discriminate based on blood relations, then I should have something to say too. Oh my, Amelia? Why are you getting so upset? I was just kidding, just kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm serious. If you keep bothering me, I'll tell Dad. Just a few words will do. Oh, just tell him then. Let's see whose side he takes. Why don't you try? I'll report how you were abusive towards Sibylla. What? Who's abusive? 
When Sabila rebelled, you hit her and forced her to do things against her will. Dad hates that kind of behavior, you know what I mean? Wait a minute, that's not relevant now. I'm done, I won't ask you anymore. I'll find a better man than your fiancé over here. Hey, Amelia, answer me already. You're so slow. I'm tired of dealing with you. What is it, mother? Amelia, have you become willing to give up your fiancé to Sevilla? What? What are you talking about now? Oh, don't you know? I'm saying that I want you to give up your fiancé to Sevilla. But earlier, weren't you so worked up about finding someone for Sevilla yourself? I tried looking for myself, but I couldn't find any suitable men. So I thought I would ask you to give your fiancé to Sevilla. What? Why would it come to that? Oh, Amelia, why are you angry? Don't you think it's a good idea? You don't have to bother finding a good man for her. I think it's a great idea. I won't give up my fiancé. Oh, why not? Don't be so stubborn. Give him up for the sake of your sister. You're her older sister, right? Don't you think it's shameful to be so stubborn? Don't be ridiculous. Stop saying such incomprehensible things. What sister would give away her own fiancé? But there's no other man better than your fiancé. That means Sibylla has no choice but to marry your fiancé, right? Your fiancé would be happier marrying Sibylla than you. That's right. That gentleman would want to marry Sibylla. I'm truly disgusted. What's wrong with your head? Even though we're not married yet, we've made a promise for the future. He won't easily switch to another woman, even if it's Sibylla. Oh my, you're quite confident, aren't you? For someone like you, Amelia. What, what do you mean for someone like me? If you're that confident, why don't you send his contact information to Sibylla and see how it goes? Contact information? Why? Don't you get it? Amelia, I thought you were smart, but... How could I possibly understand? That's so absurd! Okay, let me explain. Once they make contact and get to know each other, he'll realize that Sibylla is better for him. After all, she looks better and has a charming personality. She takes after me, you know. So do you understand now? Send Sibylla the fiancé's contact information right away. That's it. Sibylla will be happier than Amelia for sure. I'm so glad. I was a little worried about what would happen. Thank goodness we found a man who will make Sibylla happy. Thank you, Amelia. Do whatever you want. I'm speechless with disgust. Really, I can't believe this person is my mother. Hey, take a look at this. What's this? Wedding dress photos? Over 50 of them? What's this? An insane number! I thought I hadn't heard from you in two weeks. What are you thinking, mother? Amelia, did you look at the dress photos? Uh, yes, there are a lot of photos, but they're lovely wedding dresses, aren't they? I can't believe it. Did you prepare all this for my wedding? What are you talking about, you fool? It's obviously for Sibylla's dress. Do you think I'd lift a finger for you? I see. I was foolish to even hope for a second. So, has Sibylla found a husband? <laughs> I can't stop laughing! Hey, Amelia, what do you think of this dress? Um, I think it's lovely, but... Of course you do, of course you do. I picked it out. It's for my cute, adorable Sibylla. Don't you think I have good taste, Amelia? Y yes I suppose So, about Sibylla's partner... That girl already has a boyfriend, and he's super elite. Hey, hey, Amelia, do you want to know what kind of man he is? You want to know, don't you? It's about your cute little sister, after all. Uh, sure, what's he like? He's an elite lawyer. That's why we don't need your silly fiancé. I'm so proud of her. As expected of my daughter with my blood, she found a wealthy partner to make things easier for me. It was worth all the hard work of raising her. Me and Sibylla were going to be happy. How wonderful that would be. I've been working hard for this moment. Oh, I just thought of something great. Hey, Amelia, your wedding is coming up soon, isn't it? Yes, it's soon. Why don't you have a joint wedding with Sibylla? I think it's a wonderful idea. What do you think, Amelia? Of course, it's fine. 
Actually, Sibylla also proposed a joint wedding ceremony, and I've agreed to it. You've become quite understanding, haven't you? I think a joint wedding ceremony with my sister is a lovely idea. Poor thing, wouldn't you be embarrassed, though? Huh? Why would I be embarrassed? Isn't it obvious? Sibylla's partner makes more money than yours. He's even a lawyer. Your partner is just a company employee, right? If you focus on the bride, your sister is cuter and more charming than you. You'll definitely be embarrassed. I can't keep up with mother's thoughts and emotions, as always. Well, I gave up a long time ago. Anyway, my partner is also in favor of the joint wedding ceremony, and I think it'll be easier for our relatives and friends to gather if we have it together. Well, I was just concerned, but I understand why you would give up easily. The only thing you have over Sibylla is your intelligence. Sibylla, who takes after me, is cute, beautiful, and charming. You don't stand a chance against her. Enough with the sarcasm, please. By the way, about the wedding guests, could you tell me your wishes, mother? We need to inform the venue about the number of guests. It's not your wedding, it's Sibylla's wedding guests. We have to make the wedding lively and glamorous. And to make it more glamorous, we need more people. From my brothers and sisters to my nieces and nephews, even our friends will attend. Should we also invite the neighbors to increase the number of guests? We need to have a large number of guests to make the party spectacular. And the wedding photos won't look good if the number of guests is small. Oh, we're going to be so busy. Even if it's all for Sibylla, your wedding will be exciting too, Amelia. In the end, you'll be thanking me. Yes, yes, I always... I always appreciate everything you do, Mother. Hey, Amelia, answer me! What are you doing at a time like this? What's wrong? You look furious. Today is a wedding day, a happy occasion, right? Amelia, what the hell is going on? Explain it to me! Why are you angry, Mother? It's a commemorative day for Sibylla and me to be happy. Don't play dumb! S -S Sibylla's partner is a woman! Don't say you knew it! Oh, she's a wonderful person. Th that means there will be three brides! Explain this to me so that I can understand! I'm not sure I can explain it to you in a way you'll accept, but I think you already know. Sabila is gay. She came out to me when we were teenagers. She thought something was wrong with her because everyone she fell in love with was a woman. She was really worried. Recently, same-sex marriage has become legal, but discrimination is still rampant. She couldn't confess her feelings to the person she loved, and she struggled and cried. However, she changed after meeting her current girlfriend. She is brave and kind, so Sibylla was able to change as well. She wants to help others with similar struggles by getting married to her same-sex partner and coming out to those around her. It's a beautiful goal. So, I want to support and help Sibylla too. I asked her partner for help, and I was very happy when she said she wanted to cooperate. So, we decided to invite as many people as possible and come out during the wedding. Th that that kind of thing. Your father won't approve. I hate to say it, but Dad knows about it. That's a lie! There's no way he would know about this! Why don't you ask Dad, then? When my sister and her partner decided to get married, they went to see Dad and told him everything. They went to see him? I didn't hear anything about this! Dad has a generous heart and he accepted them. He said, your life is your own. Be happy with the person you've chosen. Those are wonderful words, aren't they? Your dad knows about all this? Wait, was I the only one who wasn't told? And on the day of the wedding like this, it's too cruel! Why didn't you say something? Why? Because if we told you, you would have made a fuss all by yourself, right? It would have been annoying and troublesome, so we kept it a secret until the last minute. What? Who are you calling annoying? I see, I get it, so that's what's going on. You're the one who planned all this, aren't you? Only someone as sneaky and mean as you could do something like this. It wasn't just me who decided, it was unanimous. Unanimous? Why? Why am I the only one being left out? Your dad, he betrayed me too? This can't be happening, it's impossible. 
Everyone, everyone deceived me? Why, why did this happen? I just wanted my daughter to be happy. I raised her with so much love. Where did I go wrong? If you don't understand, I'll explain it to you, mother. You just get what you deserve. What? Why do I deserve this when I haven't done anything wrong? I have raised my daughter to this day thinking only of her happiness. No. What you were thinking about wasn't your daughter's happiness. It was all about your own happiness. But that's not true. You discriminated between me, your stepchild, and your biological daughter, Sibila, and physically abused Sibila to raise her the way you wanted her to be. Your actions have led to today's result. Please, let Sibila be free. If you truly care about your daughter's happiness, you should do that. Sh shut up! You're so annoying. What do you know? It was really tough for me to raise Sibila alone after I divorced my ex-husband. I was happy when I finally got to marry your father, but you got in the way. Because you were always around your father, I was lonely. It's your fault. You're the bad one. I hope you'll become unhappy. I am technically your daughter, right? You said you have always lived your life thinking only of your daughter's happiness, didn't you? Don't make me laugh. In the end, your own happiness was more important than ours. Contacting each other will only make us unhappy. Let's stop, shall we? Let's never see each other again and be happy. That's what will make Sabila happy too. Goodbye, mother. Amelia, I actually wanted to talk to you about something. Oh, mother, you don't seem to be feeling well. Is something wrong? It's about Sabila. What happened to Sabila? I can't stop crying because I'm so sad. Are, are you crying, mother? Sabila, Sabila? Mother, I don't understand you if you keep crying. Please tell me what happened. Actually, Sibila left home. I don't know what to do. What do you mean? It's natural for her to leave home now that she's married, isn't it? But, 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 but she cut off all ties with me. What should I do, Amelia? Please think of something. Cut off all ties? The gentle and kind Sibila did that? Is that true? I wouldn't lie in such a terrible situation. Please think more carefully about this. To be cut off by a daughter who shares the same blood. Oh, what should I do? I see what you mean, Mother. Sibila cut ties with you. Um, I know it's painful for you, but please face reality. Sibila is fed up with you, Mother. Fed up? Why would she hate me? I raised her with great care. Don't say such foolish things. There's no way Sibila would think of me like that. There's no way? But didn't you say that she cut ties with you and left? Uh, well... It can't be helped. Let her go. Stop restraining Sibila and let her be free. This is no joke. What about my life? What are my plans? What plans? I was going to be taken care of by her husband, who was an elite lawyer. I worked hard and struggled to raise that child when she was young, all for that purpose. In the end, it was for yourself that you worked hard to raise Sibila, not for her. I understand why Sibila has given up on you. Don't talk like you know it all. What will happen to me from now on? Hey, Amelia, won't you persuade Sibila to come back? Persuade her? I want you to persuade that strange woman, the creepy lesbian, to break up with Sibila and make her come back home. That's impossible. What? Why? Don't say that so easily. It all depends on whether or not the family can live together, you know? Family? Didn't you just call that woman a creepy lesbian a moment ago? Referring to our family? Th that's not it. That was about the other woman, not Sibila. Sibila is a lesbian too, you know. Does that disgust you so much? N no that's not it. Yes, Sibila must have been deceived. Sibila married her girlfriend of her own free will and left the house by her own choice. Let me give you some advice. Your discriminatory thoughts and remarks will surely bring harm to you. Wh why are you being so arrogant? I didn't ask for your opinion. You should persuade Sibila to come back. Remember what you said at the wedding ceremony? W wedding ceremony? What are you talking about? 
Let's live happily without ever seeing each other again, remember? Never seeing each other again? Why, we're family, aren't we? Because meeting each other will only bring unhappiness. If I'm abandoned by my family, I'll be unhappy. It may be difficult for you, who has relied on me, Sabila, and father for so long, but if you continue this kind of relationship, you will only become more and more unhappy. So let's stop this now. I'll cut ties with you two. What? Not just Sibila, but you two? What will happen to me then? Goodbye, mother. Let's both be happy. Let's stop this involvement for that purpose. Wait a minute! If you all abandon me, what will happen to me? I'm sorry for my mother, but I rejected her calls and deleted her contact information. She was contacting me so persistently, but I had to toughen up and reject it all. When Dad heard about it, he was surprised at first, but Sibylla and I told him everything about the hardships we went through and how we were raised. He remarried when we were still very young, very young that we were still seeking our parents' affection. That's when Mother started to thoroughly discriminate me between Sibylla and ignored me. Meanwhile, Sibylla was also beaten and abused if she didn't do what Mother wanted, so we sisters were always afraid. We even asked Dad for help, but Mother interfered and managed to make everything look like my fault. But you know, now that I'm an adult, I realize that those hardships made my bond with Sibylla stronger. I have to thank Mother for that. Sibylla and I told everything to Dad after the wedding ceremony. Dad apologized for his own inadequacies and was furious at Mother, and they got divorced. Sibylla cut ties with Mother as she had declared. Same-sex marriage is still not widely recognized in society, so I was worried about them, but they are happy. Supporting her partner, who is a successful lawyer, Sibylla's life is fulfilling too. Our couples get along great, and we often have fun together. We have dinner parties at each other's homes and enjoy vacations together. Oh, by the way, Dad is going to remarry soon. Of course, after the divorce is finalized. We are planning a remarriage party. I'm so excited about it.